Well, locate people of God and doing things from a different location uh, at this moment in time. Um, but I wanted to definitely, you know, uh, discuss this particular topic uh, on narcissism. And this has been something that, you know, over the last, <clears throat> I'll say about a week, I just kind of got wind of through uh, what I, I believe to be personal experience and also um, just some of the things I've seen kind of, you know, popping up lately. I've seen some topics being discussed on this. And one thing I want to say is this, especially because there's like a lot of YouTube channels out there, brothers and sisters in Christ that are ministering that sincerely have the, you know, uh, uh, hearts for people, you know, not to be deceived in this hour. And that's pretty much what this channel is geared towards exalting the word of God. Lord Jesus Christ and making sure, you know, to keep people focused on, you know, what the word says and hold the word up to everything. If you look at this channel, uh, I always say I don't do this for views and for likes and I don't, but I try to hold things up to the word of God. The things that we see current going on in the world today, across the world, especially in America, uh, with all the things taking place, I try to hold things up to the word of God and say, say what the Bible says. Of course, that's why the channel is, if it's in the word, it's in the word. And no matter what people's opinions are, no matter what the culture is saying, no matter what the news is saying, no matter what popular people that have huge you know platforms on social media that claim christ whether they musicians you know gospel musicians ministers whoever we got to hold things up to the word of god so that we do not be deceived in this last hour not only that but even we are to uh, uh be stewards of the word of god you know study to show thyself approved you know and, uh, on these last you know couple of videos i've been really hitting on the lion spirit uh, because, and I'm not done with it yet, but I won't be addressing it so much on this video because there's a lot of, uh, 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 deception out there. You know, people saying you don't need to read the Bible to be saved. You don't need to read the Bible. You can just hear the Holy Spirit. Well, if that's the case, then why is the word of God written? If that's the case, when you read Second Peter, what is it that he's writing to the churches? And he's talking about even how the days of, you know, of Noah's flood, how that happened. When he was addressing the scoffers, I believe in Second Peter chapter uh, uh, 4, when he was talking about uh, uh, scoffers, and or chapter 3, when he's talking about the scoffers and everything, he was, he was bringing the church, the people that was re reading his letter, he was bringing them into remembrance of Noah of you know at the beginning of time what God did and, and he flooded the earth and stuff well how would Peter even know stuff like that well he had to read it you know Peter was baptized in the Holy Spirit but in order to uh, also uh, uh, express to the uh, to his to his audience to the people who wrote the letters to he got that from what he read okay so uh, again but anyway uh, one thing I want to uh, emphasize is also remember this just because a particular topic is 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 shared on YouTube and social media, people tend to say things like, "Why is the church talking about this?" and "How come no pastors are talking about this?" Well, first and foremost, quit painting everybody with the same brush. When people sometimes make that statement like that, they are trying to. When I see it, they are trying to put themselves up as being one of the you know popular voices in, in land or one of the most unique voices in the earth that's willing to launch out and to express, you know, that particular topic as if, you know, they are the ones bringing it up. They are the ones talking about it and everybody else is afraid to talk about it. And that's just not true. That's not true at all. And we cannot be boastful and arrogant saying things like that. Uh, and I'm saying, you know, sometimes people are like, you know, well, this topic is not often discussed. And it may be true. It may not be often discussed. But that's why the Bible says that we are a many member body. Each joint supplies. You cannot expect a pastor to hit on every single topic in the word of God because of this, this uh, uh, specific example. You when you open the word of God, there's revelation constantly coming. Just like ourselves as individuals, we're not going to exhaust everything out the word of God and be able to hit on every single topic. Yo, yo, you don't even have a, a you can live to be 120 years old. You're still not going to exhaust everything out the word of God 
because the Holy Spirit is always going to give you more understanding, more clarity and everything. So to, for people to sit up there and say that, you should, you should kind of stay away from that because that's that's not something that, you know, we should, you know, uh, be, be saying. And, and if I've ever said that, I apologize because I don't, I don't think I've, I've, I have, but if I ever did, I apologize because, you know, we don't want to get into that mode of, well, you know, churches won't talk about this or people, you know, because you, you ain't been at every church, you know, you ain't been, you don't know every single uh, pastor or every single uh, leader at a church. You may not even know what it's like, you know, uh, I'm, I'm talking about the ones that, little, uh, you know, YouTube, uh, you know, people that share things on YouTube, uh, you, you, you're not even a pastor, so you don't know what it's like to be a pastor. You don't know what it's like to be a leader. Uh, some of the things that these pastors have to deal with, and I'm talking about the ones that are living right, that are teaching the word of God. Some of the things they got to deal with, they got to deal with people who have, you know, lost loved ones. At the spur of the moment, they got, you know, making phone calls, you know, talk with them, counseling people, counseling married couples, counseling people, taking them through deliverance, you know, all kind of things that go on beyond just ministering across a pulpit. Uh, being a pastor, that is a that is a lifelong commitment, and that is that's more important than than a, uh, the president or the king or whatever, because you're dealing with souls. You are dealing with souls, and so it's not something just to get up and just try to, you know, make it seem like you you know we got the revelation, this specific revelation about a specific topic, and and churches are not talking about this. No. Don't don't let's not be uh, uh, boastful and, and people shouldn't, you know, be saying stuff like that because just because uh, uh, you don't hear it. See, sometimes people say stuff like that and it's because in their, you know, arena or their, you know, people that they're familiar with videos that they're familiar with watching or churches that they're familiar with, they may not have heard it there. And that's because that's your little small little network that you're familiar with. But that does not mean that churches are not talking about specific topics like this for, you know, narcissism. People say, well, you know, how come the church ain't ever talking about this? Well, you, you don't know that. And some people say, well, you know, uh, many Christians, they always say statements like, well, many Christians, many people that profess Christ, many Christians. Well, you don't know even have the Christians in, in your state for one. So you can't just sometimes people want to try to say, well, many Christians are out here lukewarm and it's that you can't say that because you don't know many Christians. You you barely know the ones in your local and down the street from you. So let's not try to, you know, one thing I try to stay away from is trying to paint everybody with the same brush. Just because, because even, even in the book of Revelation, even Christ said, you have some that are doing this in this church. You have some in Thyatira doing this. You have some, you know, uh, uh, doing this or that are taken to the doctors of Balaam. You have some that are doing that, but there were many that were not. He was addressing the very small few. But some, for some reason, people get on social media and they want to act like, you know, all Christians are behaving that way. And that's just simply not the truth. Okay. You got the, you know, the, even the, uh, the news networks are saying, you know, many people are departing for Christianity. Look, the Bible warned about this already in the last days. Hey, Jesus Christ had disciples that, that, that follow him for a minute. And then when he said, unless you drink of my blood, eat my flesh, you have no part of me in the kingdom. And it says they left him. And this is like almost like hundreds of them. They left him. So look, just because, oh, we, people hear that stuff and, you know, about, you know, uh, people departing from the faith and people not attending church and everything. For one, there's a lot of deceiving demons out there seducing people away from the church. I'm talking about the local assembly. And I'm not saying, you know, if you're in the you're in the midst of trying to find a church home, you're praying to God, I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about the ones that are just saying, hey, you don't need a church. You know, you I I I feel closer to God outside of church more than I ever did in the church. And you're lying. Okay, you're under deception. All right. And so people uh will say things like that, in other words, when I when I say people, they say things like, well, I feel more closer to God outside the church than I inside the church. What you're saying is you don't want accountability. All right. Because God always uses this church. Now, yes, you are you you you're supposed to have that personal study time and 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 uh 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 drawing closer to the Lord. Yes, you you should. You're supposed to be doing that. So in, in that in that sense, you should feel, you know, uh, closer to the Lord. But you also recognize the importance of being a part of a local assembly too, to be strengthened in that local assembly. 
Okay, so I don't want people to, you know, to get things the wrong way or you can't say you can't have a relationship with the God outside the church. I'm not I'm not saying that. I'm talking about when you deliberately put it out there that you don't need the church and you can just, you know, go on by yourself and just be strong in the Lord all by yourself. That's that's a deception. All right. Because what you're saying is that the apostles who wrote the entire New Testament were wrong because they needed the body of Christ. They, they, they needed to share the word of God to the body of Christ to encourage and strengthen the believers. That's how they got strengthened. And, and even the apostles were together. They would fellowship with one another. They break bread with one another. You can't even get through the first four chapters of the book of Acts without seeing how the church even was, 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 uh, was, was brought forth under that apostolic movement because they were coming together daily, taking in the apostles' doctrine and having fellowship with one another, and they grew in the thousands. Okay, so that's the point that I'm trying to make because people, uh, uh, when the, you know the media, even some you know Christian networks get a hold of, you know, many people are departing from the faith and everything. Well, the Bible warned about that. The Bible said that. All right, and so uh, we act, and then what happens is a uh, a lot of times uh, some ministries become reactive and they think they gotta become uh, super creative in order to reach, in order to draw people back back into church. Look here, the reason why people don't go to church. Is because they don't want to go to church. They made the decision. It ain't no. It ain't necessarily you know something that the church has done because it, a lot of times it's a, a one particular ministry. So they just paint everybody, every pastor with the same brush. Or if you watch ten YouTube videos of a church clowning or a pastor clowning or some kind of pastor or leader or gospel musician saying the wrong thing, you just oh, oh see that's why I don't go to church. That's why I don't go to church. No, you don't don't go because you don't want to go. Because you don't look at 10 videos and there's almost 15 million churches even across America. So you can't sit up here and say stuff like that. That is an ignorant statement. That is an ignorant decision to make based off of what you see on TV, what you see on some uh, social media uh, platform or some YouTube video. And you want to try to, keep, you know, blame the church for all of that. You know, because you, you you think of the 10 videos, that just depicts the entire body of Christ. That, that depicts every church and every ministry. And that's a lie. Okay? Because for one, you're hungry for that, so you only go towards those type of videos. You de People don't go to the ones that's speaking the truth and, and ministries that are doing things the right way. And they may not have, you know, 500 members and everything, but they're teaching the truth. And they're teaching the word of God. You won't go to the, people won't go to them kind of videos or them kind of, you know, uh, ministry websites. They go to the ones where people are doing the fool and acting the fool. All right. So I just want to kind of, you know, express that and, and share that. And again, hear me. I'm talking about the ones that's deliberately saying you don't need to go to church to have a relationship with God. Look. You are supposed to have a relationship with God outside the church and you're inside, inside the church as well. You need to be strengthened you know, and have that accountability, you know, under somebody or a man of God that's teaching the word of God to you. Okay. Because we don't know all, we all don't know everything. And, but the, we know that the Bible specifically says that Jesus gave gifts and he gave, made some apostles, prophets, evangelists, uh, pastors, and teachers for the body of Christ to perfect the saints. All right. So, if you're going to, you know, try to uh, spew that, that nonsense out there, then you got to discredit the whole entire New Testament that was written to churches. All right. There's no, you know, just one man on the island and just, you know, just trying to get all the revelation themselves and stuff. And when people start talking that, that nonsense, that's when they start, they can easily get off and they don't want accountability. They don't want nobody checking them when they're off. OK, so they'll come to your YouTube video and try to say certain things and say stuff in the comment section and stuff. And these people, they don't want no accountability anyway. And, it, you know, even trying to share things with them, they just ain't going to hear it. I have yet out of all the videos I've done and, and on Facebook posts and everything when I was on Facebook, uh, I could say out of probably about 10, 10 years, I've seen one person. You know, come to me and say, hey, man, you know what? You was right on this subject. It was my ignorance. I apologize on this. And, and and that's it. But rarely do you find people get in the comment section and say, hey, man, you know what? I had to repent. 
you 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 was right or to to anybody's be I had to repent you know when you when they debating with you back and forth in the comment section and they come to you oh I, I repent I repent I was wrong I'm sorry you know rarely do you find that okay and that's kind of leading into this 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 topic of of narcissism and this is something that uh, and I want you to definitely leave your experiences in the comment section because I know a lot of people have to have dealt with this. Uh, this manifestation um, and whether it's in marriages and, you know, uh, friendships, you know, with family members, uh, co-workers or whatever. But I want to give some examples of what I've seen, you know, on this particular topic of some some biblical examples of what narcissism does and what's at the root of narcissism. All right. And uh, and I, I, I want to read this scripture to you real quick. Second Timothy, chapter three, verses one through five. But understand this, and I got my notes off to the side, so if you see me looking off to the side, that's all it is, all right? But understand this, that in the last days there will come times of difficulty. I'm looking, I'm looking at the, uh, uh, it's the ESV version, okay? For people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unappeasable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving, good, treacherous, excuse me, brutal, not loving good, treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having the appearance of godliness, but denying his power. Listen to this last, these last three words, avoid such people, avoid such people. When you're dealing with narcissists, Bible says avoid them. See, when you look at that second Timothy chapter three, verses one, one through five, that is classic narcissism, all right? That's is that's classic narcissism, being lovers of themselves, being more important than anybody else. Uh, one of the examples that I like to uh, that I like to use, excuse me, is uh, uh, you know because I watch I watch football or whatever, and even uh, within the last couple of years, you can see this with uh, with Kanye West. When he made statements, you know, he's the greatest musician that God had ever made and everything. And, uh, uh, you know, boasting about all that he's done, all he's accomplished and all this other stuff. And that's the reason why I said, you know, uh, that, the, you know, the spirit of God showed me that that was like Simon the Sorcerer going through the form. And, that, and that's another point. I'm going to try to stay on my notes, but I may jump ahead of myself just a little bit because Simon the Sorcerer, you know, is a is 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 what uh narcissism looks like as well. Now let me let's just deal with this real quick. A narcissist is and I'm going to get my uh, just make sure I get my note my my notes out. A narcissist is someone that looks at you know exalting themselves. They always want to be puffed up, always want to be, you know, acknowledged and be exalted. There's the narcissist is someone that always won't, you know, uh, they have a high level of, of so-called self-importance, uh, very boastful, very, can be very arrogant. They hang around those that are arrogant like them and they want to be amongst the elite, you know, all this stuff. See, that's where all the, you know, Freemasonry, joining Freemasonry, joining Greek fraternities and sororities is that it, it, it encourages narcissism. It encourages narcissists, even though they try to claim that they're giving back to the community, they're giving back to this, but it's all done to bring themselves recognition and glory, okay, to be exalted, all right? Uh, uh, one of the things about narcissism, look, think about the Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde, you know, when Dr. Dr. Jekyll is, is uh, you know, it's one way, but if Mr. Hyde is completely different. It's like a, a, a beast, an angry person, and that's the manifestation of what a, a narcissist is. Is that they can present themselves one way, but boy, if you if you rub them the wrong way and say the wrong thing, I mean the anger, the rage, and the wrath comes out because they don't get their way. One of the one of the things that, that narcissists hate, well, I would say uh, enemy number one that the narcissists hate is Christians. It's Christians. I'm gonna show you exactly through the Word of God. I'm gonna show you how even through uh, experiences. They hate Christians. Why? Because Christians that are about, that have that, that have the spirit of God. Of course, if you're a true Christian, you have the spirit of God. But have the spirit of God. We do things opposite of what a narcissist wants and what a narcissist does. 
And because we do things opposite, because we're followers of Jesus Christ, we walk in humility. We look to, you know, to give and be a blessing to people and don't repay evil with evil, but return evil with good. Narcissists hate that because it exposes them. It exposes what's really on the inside of them. And the root cause of, of what I believe is that the root of all, of all narcissists is bitterness. There is a lot of bitterness. I'm going to show you through the word of God, okay? But uh, what, what is a narcissist, okay? When we look at it, uh, we're going to look at this particular definition term. All you got to do is Google it. You know, the psychology networks got this stuff. And But not only, I don't just look at the whole psychology stuff because you got to, you know, take some of that with a grain of salt, but look at what the Bible says about this stuff, okay? And we just read, you know, uh, uh, classic narcissism uh, in the, about what the end times will look like. So anyway, uh, a narcissist is, 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 uh, is wrapped up in arrogance and a disregard for other people's feelings. They are typically char characteristic. These are typical characteristics of a narcissist of a narcissist. Narcissists often have a low self-esteem, which they try to relieve by insulting or degrading others. OK, uh, for example, a, a man that tries, you know, constantly, you know, uh, puts their wives down, puts, puts women down or whatever. Women that, you know, uh, all men are dogs and stuff because they didn't got hurt by somebody. All right. So they got to degrade and put other people down in order to cover up what they're really feeling and the torment that they're feeling on the, that they have on the inside of them. This helps to reinflate their ego when they are feeling deflated or lacking in worth. One thing about narcissists is that they are unforgiving. They will not forgive. They hold grudges. They will hold on to things and bring up stuff back from when y'all was children. You know, and this is classic in, in a lot of times in families. Now, I'm, I'm saying that sometimes people can have these, these, these traits or some of these characteristics without being a full-blown narcissist. Because a full-blown narcissist, what they do, and this is what, you know, when we look in the Bible, Jesus had to deal with the Pharisees. And when I see some of their attitudes and their actions towards Jesus Christ, they were narcissists because they wanted the praise of men. They wanted to be exalted by men. They wanted to look at as being important by men. But when Christ came and showed them how they were being hypocrites and showed them how they were going against the very law that they were speaking about, they hated him. And what did they want to do? They wanted to kill him. Okay. When you look at Cain and Abel, look what happened with, 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 with Cain. All right. His works was not pleasing to God and stuff. And what was the target? Abel, his brother, because God received his offering, but he, he did not receive Cain's offering. So Cain instantly became bitter and became jealous of his brother and he killed him. See, that's what full, full blown narcissism does. Another example. This is why I say narcissists, they hate Christians. When you look at Satan, okay, he said, I will be, you know, I will ascend, you know, high to my, have my, you know, his, uh, he'll be exalted in the north above the stars of God and, and be like God and all this other stuff. And he, so he lured, he lured a third of the angels away with him and he wanted to be exalted all because of his ability and how he was, how he was created and, and the, the beauty of him and, and how he was created, he wanted to be exalted. This is why you see this happening a lot amongst, you know, uh, R&B artists, rock and roll artists and everything, even, even some gospel musicians. They want to be exalted. They want to be exalted by the public. They want to be exalted. They look for those that approval from the world. And then what happened with Satan? The Bible says in the book of Revelation, when he got cast down, he went to make war against who? The saints. He went to make war and begin to wear out the saints. All right? Because narcissists, they, they, this, is, this is an embodiment of the devil. All right? They're unforgiving. Jesus Christ dealt with this in a parable when he talked about the unforgiving servant, the one who went and he was able to go before the king and make his plea before the king. The king forgave him. Then he goes out. Okay, he goes out and sees somebody that owes him money and he chokes the man. Okay, and what did the king say? Because this king's servant saw this and reported it back to the king. He said, listen, I forgave you, but you didn't forgive him. The king says, hand this person over to the tormentors until he repays everything back. Now, when you look spiritually at tormentors, that means evil spirits. 
All right. But in that literal case, Jesus Christ gave that parable. He handed them over, you know, to 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 the bondage, to, excuse me, to bondage until he paid everything back that he owed the king. And we're going to talk about the judgment of narcissists as well, because when the sure enough as the Bible says, you know, to, to, to stay away from people like that. The other thing is this. God judges narcissists and he does it in the way that he humbles them. I mean, it, it is a strong, you know, uh, act of, of, of humbling, of humbling a narcissist. And, 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 and also if I may, I may miss uh, certain uh, points of this, I will put it in the comment section, but I definitely want you to kind of, you know, if you have had this experience with dealing with a narcissist person that you know was, you know, uh, full blown or whatever, just kind of share that testimony, how you got, how God delivered you, because this may encourage, you know, somebody. All right. But they have an arrogance and, and a disregard for other people's feelings. In other words, they can care less. They will, they will, uh, uh, you know, send you a text message, appear in the comment section, appear on your Facebook post, or whatever social media post, and just rattle off everything to attack you, to come against you, cuss you out, mock you, ridicule you and your faith. All right. And then hurry up and, 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 and delete either their, um, their social media platform or block you because they don't want to see no responses of it. They don't want to hear no response, so they hurry up and take off. Okay? That's what a narcissist does. They have no regard for other people's feelings. This is why you see so much with these young people out here gunning people down and stuff and either do one shooting after the next shooting after the next shooting. They could care less. They can care less of how it impacts other people's family. They can care less that it destroys their own community. That's why when you've seen all the whole Black Lives Matter movement, all this other stuff, all this nonsense stuff, they point the finger at the white man, but when their own race is doing the exact same uh, genocide, they say absolutely nothing about it, okay? Because they want to point the finger at somebody. They want to blame somebody. Not only that, they don't want to forgive. They want you to, they want you to release all the black people out of prison, but they don't want to forgive the things that white people did 300, 200, 400 years ago. Okay. And so this is what you see. They have no regard for people's uh, uh, feelings. They have no regards. To, look, and, and one example is that you can help somebody out. You can help this person out or this family member out or this brother or sister that they say they're brother and sister of the Lord out. You can help them out. And then when they come up or when they or when they get over that little hump where you help them out at, all of a sudden they act like you never done nothing for them. Why? Because they just want things for themselves. They could care less about your feelings. They can care less about how they treat other people. That's how they these that's why all of these artists, these rappers, everything, what do they do? They brag about what they got. They want to be exalted. They're following after their father, the devil. And that's what Jesus Christ told the Pharisees. Look here, you're of your father, the devil. Why? They were narcissists. He said, because you want to kill me. And all Jesus Christ did was speak the truth, didn't commit any sin. What, what happened? He was a threat to them. Even when the apostles in the book of Acts, what did they do? They began to preach Christ. And remember I said, narcissists, they don't want to repent. They don't like being humbled. They don't like, uh, 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 they want to be arrogant. They want to be prideful. They want to feel like they have no need to, to repent because it's always somebody else's fault. They always point the finger at the Christian. When you try to share a word of God to your family members or share, share the word of God to your coworkers or whatever, they always look at trying to attack Christianity because it exposes them. So what did they do? You know, in, 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 in the book of Acts, the apostles came and they preaching and everything the, the, you know, they healing people and everything. Why would you get mad? Cause somebody's getting healed because those Pharisees, they, they hooked up with the little government officials and everything. And they threatened the apostles and the apostle Peter said, listen, you crucified Christ instead of repenting for what they did. And for the, 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 the atrocities that they committed, they were not willing to repent. They wanted to attack and shut the mouth of the apostles. They wanted to attack them, stone them. They were going to kill them. But because of all the other stuff that was going on with the Jews and everything, they didn't. They stoned them. They just threatened them. And so they wanted to attack and shut the mouth of the apostles to keep them from mentioning the name of Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ exposed their true intention and exposed their character. Okay? 
So that's what, when you look at stuff like that, people of God, you see what narcissists are and how they are. Now, the term narcissism, it, it, it derives from this um, Greek mythology. So this is just where they got it from. But you, I'm just going to say that this is the characteristic of the devil, okay? Because that's exactly what it is. So when I say narcissism, it's, it's about that. It, it, this is uh, this is uh, Satan in, in, in body, you know, uh, influencing people and and filling them with these spirits of of wrath, of anger, of bitterness, unforgiveness. This is all that's inside of a person that's walking in what we call narcissism today. Narcissism is a term that comes from Greek mythology. And if you know the story, it's called uh, a guy by the name of Narcissus. Nar 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 <laughs> I don't know. He was a man in Greek mythology who was understood to be incredibly beautiful. Indeed, he had achieved the perfection of beauty. Don't that sound like Lucifer? Okay. And people were obsessed with his appearance. As you read about him, women would even kill themselves when they found out that they couldn't have him. Doesn't that sound like how these women act when they can't have a certain man and stuff? They get to, you know, uh, doing things where they're trying to, uh, 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 you know, uh, launch an attack against somebody on social media because a man that did them wrong or whatever. He can't have, if she can't have them, nobody can. And they, and I mean, they do crazy stuff. I seen one actually, you know, took the, uh, uh, the man's child's life because she couldn't have them, you know? So it's just, just crazy stuff. It says, as you read about him, women would even kill themselves when they found out that they couldn't have him. As narcissists would reject these women, eventually a man named Nemesis lured him. That's what you hear that word, Nemesis, you know, somebody that's, you know, uh, your arch enemy or whatever. And Nemesis lured him to a body of water, to a pool, and encouraged narcissists to look into the pool. When narcissists look at the pool and he saw his reflection. He became enamored with himself. He became obsessed with, obsessed with his own beauty and with his own likeness. And he couldn't leave the pool and ultimately die from, from staring at himself. That's just crazy. So a narcissist, let's look at the characteristics of narcissists. And we're going to go through the biblical examples as well. Narcissist is someone that's ex excessive interest in or admiration of oneself and one's physical appearances. They are, they are, they are, they have a lot of selfishness involving in a, a sense of entitlement, a lack of empathy and a need for ad admiration as characterizing as a personality type. So they need that admiration. They have that sense of entitlement. That's what the whole, you know, all the Black Lives Matter thing, they feel like entitled to have, you know, reparations, entitled all because of the stuff. So what they're doing, what that whole move was doing is creating and opening people up to become a narcissist. Unforgiving, unloving, haters of God, lovers of pleasure, wanting all the material things. All right. And so uh, uh, let's look at some um, characteristics of narcissists, a sense of self-importance, preoccupation with power, beauty, or success, entitled, can only be around people who are important or special, interpersonally exploitative for their own gain. I want to touch on that. Uh, you know, and then you got arrogance, and they show lack of empathy, okay? So I want to touch on this whole thing, interpersonally exploitative for their own gain. This is what happens when you see a lot of times, you know, in, in, in uh, uh, these upcoming, some of these, you know, prophets that got very famous and, you know, full of notoriety, whatever, all of a sudden, hey, go ahead and, you know, uh, God told me to tell you to, to sow a seed of $5,000. God told me to tell you to sow a seed of, of $1,000. So, ain't no biblical examples for that. If you sow seeds of what, $5,000, five of your family members are going to get saved. No biblical example. So what the Bible talks about this, I believe it's in First Peter. First Peter or second Peter, I'm sorry. One of the Peters, one of the writings, all right? Well, he talked about how they, I believe it's second Peter chapter three. I, now I can't let it go. Hey, he talks about how these false teachers come in and they exploit you. They take advantage of you, all right? They take advantage of people for, you know, because uh, the Bible warned about how false teachers was coming in. So they will, they will exploit and take advantage of people for gain, for their own gain. This is what Balaam did. This is what Christ warned about in the book of Revelation when he says you have those that follow the ways of Balaam. 
all right, who looked to, to have to, for, for gain. He looked to take advantage of people for his own gain. One of the uh, people, I forgot because I mentioned about sports earlier, one person I think was like just a poster child for narcissism uh, was an NFL football player. His name was Antonio Brown. This guy had all the ability and talent in the world. You know, I mean, on the field was good, but had this sense of entitlement to where he would sabotage, you know, uh, whole football teams. He would mess them up. Because of his character, because of his personality, he will get traded to another team and want to wear his own helmet. And some of y'all that watch the NFL and watch football over the last couple of years, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The guy will go to another team and demand that he can wear his own helmet rather than being on the field like everybody else with the uh, practice helmets on. He didn't want that. He called the owner a racist in front of the football team. He did all these different things, and he gets traded to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers with Tom Brady, who, who actually Tom Brady moved this guy into his house. OK, so he can kind of keep control of him so he wouldn't wild out or whatever because he knew the ability that he had. And sure enough, when now, you know, it, it, you know, he showed his true colors because he got into it with a coach. Uh, he argued with what the head coach of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And so he runs across the field. He quits in the middle of the game, takes his jersey off, takes his his uh, his uh, shoulder pads off. And all he has on is his shoes and his football pants. And he goes jogging off the field, waving by to everybody in the middle of the game. Completely abandoned his team. Okay? So he, he he did things like this. And he was always on social media talking about how great a receiver he was, how he was the best and everything. And the dude had skills. Okay? No doubt. But he was very arrogant in his ways. Okay, to where now he ended up owning a, 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 another, he ended up owning a football team. He got this football team of these young players. I think I forgot what kind of league this is in, but these guys are trying to get to the NFL. He ended up locking his own team out of their hotel. Okay, so they couldn't get in. He ended up uh, 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 mishandling the funds and all this stuff. And so they end up, the, 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 the league had to fire him. So everywhere this guy goes, what, what narcissism, what, what, excuse me, what narcissists do, everywhere they go, they leave a path of destruction. Okay? They leave a path of destruction. And what happens, and I'm, a, you know, uh, with, with narcissists, and this is a, uh, 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 something I'm seeing even in the word of God is that to deal with them, you leave them alone because for a narcissist to, to learn the hair of their ways, they have to be by themselves. They have to be humble by God. And I'm going to give you an example. Remember in the book of, uh, first, uh, I want to say first Corinthians chapter six, when Paul was dealing with the church, he said, I've, it was, it was reported to me that there's a person in that church that has his father's wife. This is not even named amongst the Gentiles. He said, I've already judged the matter. And then Apostle Paul says this, because this is what a lot of times people tend to forget. He says, are we not to judge those inside the church? Let God judge those outside the church. We're to judge those inside the church. In other words, there is judgment that you have to hold uh, people to the standards of the kingdom of God and hold people up to the word of God. So anyway, Paul says this. He says, uh, uh, Put that person out of the church, hand them over to the devil so that they may, their soul may be saved. Okay. Then he says this. He says that any person that says they are a brother in the Lord, but they're a fornicator, they're a drunkard, they're an adulterer, they're an idolater. He says, do not even eat with them. OK, why did he point this out? Because these are people that are claiming Christ. But are unrepentant, they don't want to repent. This is why you see the whole LGBT thing talking about, you know, hey, homosexuals can be Christians and all this other stuff. They don't want to repent. OK, Paul says, don't even eat with that person, have no fellowship with them at all. Because the only way for them to know the air they waste, hand them over to the devil. So their soul may be saved. So that person will look at what they've done and reflect on their own life and see what they've done. And as a result, they've been dis they've been excommunicated from the from the church. And that's why people, well, you can't put people out of the body of Christ and everything, or uh, excuse me, not the church and stuff. No, yes, you can. 
You can't. You don't let people just run around, you know, uh, uh, having children out of wedlock, getting all the women pregnant in the church and stuff just because they're on a deacon board or whatever. You cannot live an ungodly lifestyle and then sit up there and just go throughout the church and stuff and, and you ain't got no need to repent. You have no need. You don't need to repent and everything. Narcissists, they don't want to repent. They don't want to humble themselves. They don't like that feeling of being humbled. And so Paul says, look here, put them out. Put them out. Okay. Another example of a narcissist is when you look at uh, Simon and Sorcerer, this is the reason why I, you know, dealt with whole thing with Kanye West, because what a narcissist can do is that they, they, they try to betray themselves as being a Christian because they went to serve on different ministries. They sat up under certain pastors and everything. You see, you can sit up on a pastor all your life and still not be born again and still not have the spirit of God. Or still not bring forth the fruits of the spirit. See, people tend to try to equate that they have knowledge of Christ. They have knowledge of the things of God as being enough. No, we're supposed to walk out our salvation. Okay. The Holy Spirit is supposed to be able to, to produce fruits in our lives. All right. And so what a, uh, when, even when Paul dealt with this person that, you know, the, the, the ones that say that they're a brother in the Lord and they, or you can be a sister too, or, and they're an idolater, they're a drunkard, they're involved in idolatry, whatever. See, they didn't want to repent, but they're also spreading that stuff throughout the congregation. Because if you, if, if, if they're okay and they don't have to repent, then it spreads throughout their congregation. And that's why he says a little leaven leavens the whole lump. Because if you don't deal with it, it's going to spread. And that's one thing about narcissists. What they want to do is they want people on their side. They want people that's going to uh, cover up for them. They're going to they're going to present themselves in a way that people are going to like them. They could be very charismatic, very you know outspoken, and and they're also the type of person that you you know a lot of times family members or people that you know they got to walk on eggshells around. Because they don't want to get them upset. Oh, don't say that. You know, just 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 don't say that. Don't minister the word of God. Don't share scriptures because sometimes you can come off and be too harsh. And, and sometimes you can go. No, they're, they're trying to cover up for the narcissist because he's got the, he's got his tentacles. He's got his clutches on them. OK, so because they, what these narcissists do is that they influence people. They manipulate people. They, they, they can be very charming. OK, they have all the right words to say. Isn't that something what, what Satan did to Eve? Oh, you will not surely die. God knows that you will have the knowledge of good and evil. You'll be like God. You won't surely die. And so she looked up on the fruit. She looked at what he pitched, assigned his words to that fruit, saw it was desirable, and she took of it. She took of it. All right? And so when we see these things, so back to Simon the Sorcerer, even the apostles, see, Philip baptized him. The Bible says that Simon the Sorcerer believed and was baptized. Philip goes in, baptizes him, and the Simon the Sorcerer saw that they could receive, the people could receive the power of the Holy Spirit by the apostles laying hands upon them. And he says, hey, let me, you know, how much for this so that when I lay hands, they can receive it. See, Simon the Sorcerer, what happened is that he was very known. He was, he was well known in that area. And he still wanted that recognition. He still wanted that admiration. He still wanted to be exalted. Okay? So he carried that over into the Christian circle. Into the Christian group or whatever. He went through the formalities. He believed. He was baptized and was able to connect with the apostles. So he's in there now. But eventually, his true character showed. Because the apostle Peter and them began to inspect this man by what came out of his mouth. And as a result, they rebuked them, corrected them. And what did, it, what did Simon say? Hey, pray for that. The things that you said will not come up on me. See, now he knew, look, I'm dealing with men of God. And what they're saying is, 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 is they hear from God. And now he became afraid. So the apostles, they didn't connect with him. They rebuked him. And that's what takes place when sometimes you're dealing with somebody with narcissists. It takes an upfront confrontational word. Look here. You need to repent because you keep acting this way. I see what you're doing. You're manipulating people. You better repent or you're going to stand before the living God and be cast into the lake of fire. Just up front. 
because the apostles had to deal with that. They had to do, even Apostle Paul, he dealt with one when, when he kept trying to resist him. I forgot the, uh, the book that it's in, but for those of you that read your Bible, you know what I'm talking about. Apostle Paul was ministering to somebody. I think it was Bar Jesus was the guy who was the, uh, who was another, uh, a person that was trying to withstand Paul from ministering the gospel to somebody and trying to lead somebody to, 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 to Christ. And this guy kept, you know, running the apostle Paul down. And Paul said, he looked at him, he said, you child of the devil, the judgment of God come upon you. And the man went blind. See, because when it comes to narcissism, it's like the hand of God, God is is it does not like that because it's, it's it's full of it's one of the spirits that's in that is in narcissists is pride, it's pride, and 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 the Bible talks about Leviathan that spirit of Leviathan being the father of all of those that are prideful. All right. That's why you see, you know, the whole LGBT thing and gay pride and all this other stuff that they're pushing all these, you know, even these politicians because they want to be exalted by people. They want to be accepted by people. So they're just going to go whatever the wind blows and they're going to keep going that way. They don't want to repent. They don't want to acknowledge the truth. So as a result, what happens, they end up getting humble with the harsh, you know, act that takes place in their life. It can come through sickness. It can come through diseases. It comes through AIDS. It comes through all these different things because the actions that they're doing and they're saying God approves it and all this stuff. So in other words, they don't need to repent. As a result, judgment starts taking place in their own bodies because their own body is going against what they're doing. All right? So they exploit for their own gain. And that's what Simon the Sorcerer tried to do. That's what Kanye West did for their own gain. He wanted the gift of the Holy Spirit so that he can exalt himself again for his own gain. And that's sometimes, you know, what people do. That's sometimes what people do, even sometimes even in, in, in leaderships and in, 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 uh, on some ministries where they have these men that are their, their armor bearers you know, and they just, you know, completely use them and abuse them just for their own gain. So they can be looked at when they go to different church conferences or their leader or their minister somewhere that they can show the church how many armor bears they got. Excuse me. And they misuse these men. Using them, you know, to pick up their laundry. Using them to go, you know, talking about you serving God, if you serving me and stuff, go pick up my laundry. Let me use your car to go do this and that. Uh, give me a couple of dollars so I can go get me something to eat or give me a couple hundred dollars so I can so I can do stuff like this. And so they are using these people for their own gain. And this is the same thing because and I'm, I'm, I'm probably still going to deal with this whole thing about Phoebe being an apostle and stuff. But anyway, same thing with women because now you got women having women armor bearers, which... Please show me somewhere in the comment section where you see a woman armor bearer, okay? Because all this is is competing against the man. That's all it is. What you can do, I can do better. So anyway, women doing this stuff. The way they want women to serve them, you know, give them their lipstick, put lipstick on them, uh, carry their Louis Vuitton bags and, and follow them around like some peon. Now, look here, I'm not saying, you know, because I, I was an armor bearer for a pastor, you know, uh, years ago. I just had a lot of zeal for God. You know, I love the man of God and stuff at the time and was like, hey, man, you know, me and my, you know, my, my other uh, buddy, we were just kind of going with him because he had like two churches and stuff. We was kind of going with him from, you know, one location to another and just kind of, you know, being around our pastor. We were young, you know, in the Lord and stuff, had a lot of zeal. We just wanted to be around him and stuff. He wasn't, you know, taking advantage of us to where we just, you know, he taking money from us and stuff like that. So I, I know, you know, when it comes to that, but he what he was trying to do was trying to show us about ministry at their young age. What do you do as a, as a pastor, as a leader? How do you, you know, minister to the people and everything and the things that people need and stuff and, 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 and to really be there for them? Because at the time he would, you know, talk to us and, and encourage us in the Lord and all that stuff. So we would travel with him from different places. So I'm not knocking being an armor bearer, but I am knocking when it, when it comes to where you're just being used as a peon. To where you the you the you know you the 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 uh the end of every joke, every punchline, everything and stuff. They, they disrespect you in front of your wife and your children and stuff. You don't be sitting up on something like that to go through that type of ridicule. 
Okay. He, he using your car. She using your car to go get stuff, to go run errands and everything. And, and if the moment you say no and stuff, are you being disobedient to God? No. Now, again, because I, I don't paint everybody with the same brush. I'm talking about the ones that are doing stuff like that. Okay. Because you ain't being an army. You're being a PI. You're being used for their own gain. And don't even recognize it. Because you think this is the way it's supposed to be. No, it's not supposed to be like that. When do you see, even when you see Jesus Christ and his disciples, Jesus loved his disciples. He, he encouraged them. He rebuked them. But they, he, was, he was not just, you know, disrespecting those men every time that they turn around. Even Peter, he had, he had a wife because he had a, Peter had a mother-in-law that Jesus Christ had to heal. You know, Jesus, he treated them as men. Okay, but this stuff, what people do, what, what narcissists do, what this narcissist, you know, spirit, whatever, what it does is that it's all about trying to make themselves look good. How many armor bearers they got? How many people they got attending the ministry? Who attends their ministry? Oh, I got this celebrity and this, this R&B singer and this NFL athlete. They attend my ministry. So, see, that's what that, that, that narcissism starts manifesting when they start boasting about the things and who they are connected to. That's again, all these, you know, black Greek letter organizations. That's what it's all about. Who are they connected to? Who gets the most clout? Who gets exalted? Okay, because again, the, who's over all that? The devil, because that's exactly what he wanted. All right, so interpersonally exploitative, ex, exploitative for their own gain. They're arrogant. They lack empathy. In other words, they don't care how their actions or words affect others or relationships. They could care less because they ain't trying to repent anyway. So they want to say things that's going to get under your skin. They're going to say things that they know, I'm going to go ahead and drop this bomb on them, say something about their character, run them down, everything, mock them, mock God, mock the church and all this other stuff because I know that they don't like that. See, these narcissists, they know how to trigger you, especially when they're in your own family, especially if you're married to one, okay? They know how to trigger you. They know how to get up under their skin where you just feel that, oh boy, I'm just, I'm going I'm to send this text message. The Holy Spirit tells you, no, don't send it. Don't respond. Don't repay evil for evil. Okay? And that's why I say, you know, when Christ said, hey, look here, bless those that curse you. You know, blessed are you when you're hated for my name's sake. Okay? That's how you put on the sufferings of Christ. Well, you want to respond, but your, your flesh is like, look, I can say something that will shut them down with the facts. I got the receipts. I can shut them down. But, oh. You got to yield yourself to the Holy Spirit. We don't walk in the flesh. And I know sometimes we may make a mistake and accidentally push sin just so they can see it. And now, okay, Lord, I'll repent. I'm sorry. I won't do it again. But you just had to get that off of you. I, I, I hear you in the spirit. <laughs> but anyway, uh, some people want that. So uh, you do, do, they know how to trigger things. They know how to get, especially because I say family, because family knows you. They know you before you got saved. And now when you try to share scripture with them or you try to share the things of God with them, some just can't receive because they're looking at their life compared to yours. They're looking at how you're living now, how you've changed now, and they're still doing the same thing. So in other words, they got to try to pull you down. They got to drag you down. They got to expose you on social media. They got to expose you to other family members. They got to call you out at the family reunion. They got to say all kinds of stuff. Oh, don't talk to her. Oh, here she go again, preaching the stuff again. What was you preaching when you was uh, out last year doing this, this, and that stuff? Yeah, I got an issue with you preachers and you ministers. They got to come around and do that because your fruits expose them. That's why Christ calls us light, you know? So you, you're exposing them. Even the word of God says this. I think this is in 2 Peter chapter 2. It says that they marvel that you do not engage in the same ungodly activities, the lust and all the, the carousing and all the rioting, all the wild parties. They, they marvel that you don't do those things. So what do they do? They try to attack you. I'm just paraphrasing it. They try to attack you and mock you because you don't do those things with them. Because they're narcissists, because they want narcissists, they need groups of people that support and condone what they're doing. That's why they want to be connected with those like them. 
Because when they, when, they, when it's more like them, they know how to attack and come against you as a child of God. They got somebody on their side. These narcissists, what they do because they got the spirits of unforgiveness, they got bitterness. That's what they said inside of, about Simon the sorcerer. The apostle Peter and them says, you have a root of bitterness in you that's defiling you. That's what's at the root of narcissism because of unforgiveness and bitterness in them. So they these what they do, they they connect with other people that are like them that they can identify with. See, because these demons, they work in groups, people. And spirits of of, of, of lying, or oh, they connect with other people that have the same, that they have that lying spirit in them. They know how to connect with them. All right. They know how to hone in somebody that's a drunk or they know how to find, you know, uh, Slick Willie in the back of the alley. They know, they know where to find the people that, where the drunks hang out at. And so the same people that walk with that unforgiveness and bitterness in them, they know how to connect with others like them. Okay? So when we have the Spirit of God, we know how to connect with other believers. We have the Spirit of God in us because we can tell by their fruits. That's why Jesus Christ says, by, by their fruits you shall know them. By their fruits, you shall know them. All right? So they lack empathy. They can care less how their actions or their words affect others. And they come around later on, you know, oh, okay, I'm, I'm sorry. They say they're sorry for, 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 for the sake of saying they're sorry. They're not going to repent to the Lord for their actions. They may come and apologize to you, but all that is is just to try to put a band-aid on a bullet hole. They try to put a band-aid on it because so, they're going to turn around and do the same thing again. So uh, they want forgiveness, but they won't forgive others. They want you to forgive them. And see, they know this with a, with a Christian that a Christian is supposed to forgive. All right? They want you to forgive them. But all oh, they ain't going to forgive you if you ever make a mistake. You say the wrong word. The wrong thing come out of your mouth. The wrong action. You react to somebody the wrong way. Oh, they're going to hold that over you because now... You're a Christian, you're supposed to be doing this, and now this, 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 and that, now they're ready to run you down. I'm going to tell you this, people of God. Being friends with a narcissist, the Bible says that anger lies in the bosoms of fools. You got to read the book of Proverbs, do a word study on anger, or what it means to be around an angry person. They're like a city with no boundaries. I mean, they just uh, flash off on anybody and everybody. They don't care who they hurt. They don't care who gets upset with them, and if they know they got under your skin, that's what gratifies them. That's what gratifies them. So being friends with a narcissist is like owning a serpent. I'm sorry, I'm just adjusting my shirt. It's like owning a serpent. You could take good care of it and it will still bite you because after all, it's still a snake. It's still a serpent. So no matter how much you try to appease a, a, you know, a narcissist, or whatever good you do to them, they will still Look at that and come to attack you at any given point in time. Okay? That's why the Bible talks about, you know, Paul says, I don't want you to be in covenant with demons. I don't want you to sacrifice the demons, be in covenant with demons, because the, the, the devil is a cruel master. You enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, but he's going to destroy you. Okay? So, narcissists, they must be admired. It will look they will always look to tear down those that are admired to be the one admired or looked up to. In other words, they will try to pull you down because they want to be the ones taking credit for pulling you down, for calling you out, calling out your faults because you're in the family. They know you or because you 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 went to school with them. They knew how you was back in high school. They knew how you was back in college, your college days and everything. They always bring that up. And so they try to bring that up. They try to do it in a, sometimes they try to do it in a slick way, like trying to make everybody laugh. But really they're trying to do that to discredit you and discredit your testimony. That's what they do. Okay. That's what they do because they want to be the ones, the center of attention. They want to be admired. So in order to admi be admired, they look at you being the one. Because some of you, as people of God, your family gives you favor. Your family members even love you. They look to you for, for, for direction and for guidance. But you got some family members that look to try to discredit you because your words that bring forth life by the Holy Spirit because you're, you're giving the counsel of God, it shames them. And instead of repenting, and coming to Christ, they don't want to humble themselves. 
They rather hold their position in bitterness and anger because they feel like they have a right to have certain things against you. Because what was done, because of the way your relationship used to be or what you did to them. Because look here, we all have past that we had to get delivered from. We've had to repent, ask for forgiveness of friends, family members, loved ones, uh, co-workers, whatever. Because prior to coming to Christ or even while in Christ, we have made so many different mistakes. So many wrong choices, did the wrong thing, reacted or responded the wrong way. Didn't hold our, didn't keep it to our word. And so we had to repent. But see, with a narcissist and a person that's walking in that unforgiveness and bitterness, they won't. They don't want to do that. So instead of receiving the truth that's able to save them, they got to hold a grudge because they don't want to humble themselves. They don't like that feeling of being humble. Okay? That's why Satan, when he came to Christ, what did he do? If you are the son of God, turn this bread, these, bread, these stones into bread. If you are the son of God, do this. In other words, he tried to get Jesus Christ to show who he really was, to show him, to prove himself. If you're a Christian, why you do this? Why aren't you doing this? Why aren't you? They're trying to get you in a place to where you respond to that filth and that bitterness in them by you trying to prove yourself because that's what they do. Their life is made to try to prove themselves to other people. They want the admiration. See, they want you to do, if you're a Christian, go over there and heal that person right now. They want you to prove yourself. Because when you do that, now you're getting in the area of what the devil did. Trying to prove himself to all the angels and everything that he was going to be God. He was going to be like God. They want you to prove yourself. Even Christ told his brothers, it says, look, because the brother, they saw the, the feast going on down there. They said, uh, I, I forgot uh, the particular chapter, but they said they saw a feast going on. They said, hey, Jesus, the people are asking about you. They want you and stuff like that. Go on down there and show yourself and prove yourself to them. And Jesus says, no, my time has not yet come to you. Any time is right for you, but my time has not come. It's not time for me to go down there. See, because Christ walked in humility. He came in on a dunk. He walked in humility. And that's how we're supposed to walk. We walk in meekness. We have the power of the Holy Spirit, but we're not out flaunting around and trying to talk about, you know, I did this and everything. I did that and everything. And I didn't heal four blind people. And I done made three people get up and walk. And so you should come support my ministry. All because all this is going. Look, you don't have to broadcast it like that. What Christ did, he set people free. People saw it, the word spread out about him. When you do good work at your job and stuff, you ain't got to boast about it, put it all on social media, everything, because your workers and people around you, they let, that, that's why the Bible says, let another praise you and not your own lips, someone else and not your own mouth. Okay? So I'm going to give you some, uh, some examples, some biblical examples of narcissism. And uh, we want to look at this. Uh, and I'm, some of the stuff is just on my notes that I have. But it says, Paul dealt with... Uh, dealt with narcissism when he talked about a person at the church of Corinthians that had his father's wife and refused to repent. Then Paul gives a clear example of those who claim they are followers of Christ, but refuse to repent. And he specifically says, do not even eat with them. Not only that, but even in Jesus Christ in the book of Revelations, he said, I gave that woman Jezebel a chance to repent. And if he told the churches, if you do not repent, I will do this. In other words, Christ is going to do something that is going to severely humble them to where they know, hey, I need to get it right. Because he told Jezebel, look here, I will kill her and put her children on, I will put her on a sick bed, kill her children with death. Okay? So that the churches will know that I judged and know the intents of every man's heart. Okay? And so Christ even warned the churches about not repenting. Look, look, people of God. And if, if people, whoever's watching this is not a person of God. And I told you about the whole person that's, you know, playing around with psychic cards and everything. Look here. You need to repent. Because trying to operate in witchcraft and trying to gain control and manipulate others or trying to bring others to yourself, you're doing exactly what Simon the Sorcerer did. Claiming God, but you don't have the spirit of God. And you need to come to repentance. But anybody that's watching this, listen, 
Go before the Lord and be completely honest with every internal thing that you may be struggling with, that you know you have a habit of doing and stuff, and bring that before the Lord. Humble yourself before the Lord because the Bible says God resists the proud. I believe that's in the book of James. He resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. Okay? He resists the proud. As a matter of fact, even in, uh, I want to say second, uh, second Peter chapter two, when it talks about how God's, God says that his ears, the Bible says that his ears are attentive to the righteous, but his face against those that do evil and against the wicked and against the ones that don't want to repent. His face is against them. Okay. So throughout the Bible, we'll see how. <laughs> God dealt with narcissists. All right. One of the things that God dealt with narcissists, look at Nebuchadnezzar. What did he do? I mean, they made statues of them. You see what's happening in China. They got statues of their leaders. Statues, very arrogant. They want the worship. What did God do? Humbled him. That man was walking around like a beast. Look at Pharaoh, exalted himself, was a ruler, was a king, had servants, had people all on his team, people that supported him. Talk highly of him. God started sending that judgment through Moses, sending them plagues, and he hardened Pharaoh's heart. And what did God do? Drown the Pharaoh's entire army. See, Pharaoh, see, one thing that narcissists do is that anyone that is showing them up, and this person, you ain't got to show them up. You ain't even trying to do nothing. You just living your life. You trying to follow Christ, but it's showing them up. Because your character, your actions, you're well spoken of by your family members, by people in your community. You're well spoken of by people in your ministry and everything. And so, and so the narcissist, they got to find a way to come against you. They got to find a way, whether it's to spread malicious rumors or gossip about you or try to slander you. Like what we just read in the last times will be, they will be slanderers. They got to do these things. But also this, people of God, a narcissist looks at anybody that is being uh, 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 praised by people in a righteous way as a threat to them. The narcissist looks as a, at a Christian, at a person that follows Christ as a threat to them. And so what, what I mean by that is this. Look at what happened in the days of Jesus Christ before he was being born. I mean, when he was born, King Herod. Anytime a king felt like another king was coming or some of the people were looking for somebody or deliver whatever, the king, because of his insecurity, and his, his, his jealousy and that narcissism, because he wanted the praise, he sent out a decree to have all the two-year-old killed, all the two-year-old boys killed to try to catch Christ. What happened in the book of Acts when that one man, that one king was being exalted by the people, they was calling him a God and everything. The Bible says an angel came and struck him down and worms came out of his body because he was being exalted. Okay. He wanted to be exalted in the land. Another way, another thing is, you know, even with Pharaoh, what did he do? What did Pharaoh do? He wanted to be praised. He wanted to be exalted. He was, Pharaohs were considered as gods. Okay, that's why you got the little sphinx and stuff on the Alpha Phi Alpha uh, 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 fraternity shield. These are false gods. So anyway, uh, uh, he wanted to be looked at as God. And what did he do? Because the Hebrews were expanding and growing, it was a, he took that as a threat to his empire. And so he had the little children thrown into the Nile with the crocodiles. Okay. So you see these things that narcissists, they want everything to be under their control. They want to manipulate. And especially, you know, when people are married to narcissists or whatever, and, and this, this not only goes for men, but this goes for women too, because women can uh, uh, also, uh, uh, through their children, try to raise up narcissists. Feeling that sense of entitlement. That's why I can't stand when people say, oh, you black. You." They tell these teenage boys or these children, if you black, you already got a strike against you. In other words, already carrying an offense that everybody's out to get you. And that and 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 but you you have a right. You are entitled to certain things because of your skin color. That's nonsense. That's a lie because you black. You got a strike against, you No, know, how about you got a strike against you when you commit a crime? Yeah, you got a strike against you now. But you ain't got no strike. You, you got a strike against you when you constantly flunking all your classes. All right. There, there's some strikes. Those are called flags. F's. 
on the progress report, report cards, even in summer school. All right. So uh, uh, people always try to uh, 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 use this. And so even with women, they can try to, you know, uh, raise up little narcissists because anytime that they do something, the teacher can't hold the child accountable. The camp counselors can't hold the child accountable. The employers at McDonald's or Walmart, they can't hold these, these young people accountable because the moment they do, the mother come, uh, coming up there blowing steam out her nostrils, defending them regardless of whatever action that they committed that these employers and these teachers and these counselors saw was wrong. They don't even want to hear it. They'll confront the manager. They'll confront the other person's parents They're at the camp, at the summer camp. They'll confront everybody else and never hold their child accountable for anything. And so that child grows up having no regards for authority, have no regards for, for any structure at all. This is what produces your latest, you know, your hip hop artists, because all these rap artists are narcissists. And they're following their father, the devil, who was the, who was the, who was their chief. Okay, female artists are, are, are as well, because what do they use? Use they use sexuality to control and manipulate men. They're using their bodies to seduce men into sin. Why? For their own gain. They will they will go out there and sleep with these producers, these movie makers. Thinking that because they, they'll lay with them for their own gain so they can be exalted and then want to give honor to God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power, the power of the Holy Spirit to change them. They deny that because they don't want that. They don't want to humble themselves to the Lord. They want God to be what they want him to be, not what the word says he is. That's what narcissists do. That's what women do. They manipulate men. They manipulate their husband. They know how to jab at their husband in a way to get him to react, to get him in anger. Sorry about that. To get him in anger because in doing so, now they got something to hold over him. Now they know how to manipulate certain things. And when now the husband has done something or reacted in a certain way, they can hold that over him forever because now they can use that to control him. That's how narcissism uh, also manifests within, within women, even in marriages. All right? Being a part of these, these organizations because they want to be exalted. They want to be the women that's empowered over their own husband. That's why I talk about you these whole this this whole thing with female apostles and everything because a, a woman apostle if she's married that means she's over her own husband. Her husband has to yield to her, and that's completely out of order. See, this is goes this is, this goes beyond you know uh, being an apostle in a church because you're also one over your own family, your own marriage. Okay. So for all those who want to say phobia and all that was a, with these women apostles and stuff like that, it, it, explain that to me. Explain how that impacts the order of a marriage. Okay? Because you just don't turn it on and turn it off. Just like if you're a pastor at a church, you need, you can't say, well, at the outside of pulpit, I'm not the pastor no more. No, you're still a pastor. Because if you commit a crime or you, you run a speed limit, they arrest you, they're going to say the pastor of New Fellowship Baptist Church was arrested for driving 50 miles per hour in a school zone. Because the world knows how to identify you. And the soul show do the saints of God in their community. Okay? But anyway, so that's how women can do it. Manipulate, control, never be satisfied with anything. Always ungrateful, just like in the in in um uh second Timothy. Ungrateful, selfish. If I can't get this, you know, you don't love me. If I can't have this material possession, you don't love me. They're constantly gorging off of housewives of Atlanta and NBA wives of, 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 of the planet Pluto or whatever the reality show is. They gorge off of that stuff because that is, is, is building in them to be those that, that, that narcissist a, a woman to manipulate and dominate her husband. Some women want that, want that control over their husband. They don't want him to lead. They want to be able to boss him around. 
Okay? So anyway, this is how it, 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 it happens and how it manifests even within the marriage. Now, the Bible is very clear, you know, because you may be married to a narcissist or someone that has these, I will say that someone that has these traits, these traits, because narcissists, they can become very physically and verbally abusive. And I'm not telling anybody to stay in, in something or, or stay, I will say this, stay in the same uh, 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 under the same roof with somebody that is physically abusive at all. I'm not saying stay there at all. Get out of there. Okay? So, uh, but the Bible talks about, the Paul says, hey, look here, you know, if you've married an unbelieving husband, uh, to, to, to walk in a peaceful and quiet spirit, then in that peacefulness and quietness of your spirit, he may be he may be one. But if he leaves, let him go. Okay? If he leaves, let him go. So that's again, that letting them be. Now I'm not saying push them out the house. You just deliberately doing stuff to, to get him there. No, you have to seek the Lord, people. You have to seek the Lord. There's a woman that uh, I'm going to put her testimony in the uh, link. That talks about being married to a narcissist and what happened and her experience and stuff. And uh, uh, just, you know, uh, check that uh, clip out because this stuff goes both ways. All right. Narcissists, what they try to do is do things for their own gain. When you look at Jezebel, what did she do to try to get that vineyard from that man? She used people to lie on that man in order to get uh, uh, so that um, her husband, Ahab, would get the vineyard. Have people lie on them. Okay? And so we see these things, how narcissists, they got to have a community. They got to have connection with other people that can help further their agenda. Okay? Even if it means accusing and lying on somebody in order to get that accomplished. She went after an innocent man who had an abundance. And she went after him because she, she stirred her own husband up and she was able to get that for her husband. Okay? And so these are narcissistic, you know, characteristics. Now, Jesus, I'm going to say this on my notes too. Jesus dealt with, with narcissistic uh, Pharisees who wanted the accolades and wanted the praise of men and blamed and accused him for deceiving people by going against the law of Moses. They are lying against him. Because Jesus Christ, how he was speaking, he was speaking even to people who began to praise the Lord in the land. They said he speaks as one with authority and not of the, like the scribes and Pharisees. And guess what? The Pharisees and Sadducees, they became angry with him because they wanted to stone him because the way he was walking, he was drawing people to the Lord, to the heavenly father God. And they didn't like that. They wanted the praises of men. Even Christ warns us and tells us, look here, don't let your left hand know what your right is doing. Don't be like the hypocrites. Don't be like these narcissists out here that look for the praise of men. But when you pray, go pray in your closet and shut the door because what God sees in secret, he rewards openly. Okay? So Christ is even warning us, look here, don't be like this. Don't be like them, the hypocrites, because they, they like to be heard for their many words. Because the Pharisees, what they were teaching, they were saying, hey, if 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 you are, uh, uh, if, if you have gain, you have, you know, finance or whatever, you can grow up and your parents are in need of help. You can grow up and, and claim, I think they said a uh, uh, Torah or Korah, something like that. In other words, saying that, hey, I get to keep this because I'm going to use this as a as a donation of something else so I don't have to take care of my parents. In other words, they were teaching people how to be selfish. I think I'm kind of describing that right, but you can see that in the parables, in the Gospels. Okay? In other words, he was trying to say, look, you can, you can hold on to these things. The Pharisees say, you can hold on to these things for your own self. Okay? So, Narcissism, narcissists look to gather people to support them and completely ignore their own hypocrisy. The Pharisees, they, no matter how many kind times Jesus Christ called them out, they will ignore it. Okay? And part of their empire of narcissism is anger. Even leading 
to wanting to destroy another person's life because their conduct is embarrassing them. That's what I mean, that the narcissist hates Christians. That's why Satan, come, Satan comes down with great wrath. He, he's not going after the Muslims. He's not going after the Buddhism, Buddhists. He's not going after all the people of the world. It says he's come down with great wrath to make war against the saints. And the Bible calls people of disobedience children of the devil. So what are children of the devil? They don't feel the need to repent. They don't want religion. They don't want Christ. They don't want any of these things. They want narcissism. They want things their way. That's why it is crazy for any ministry to try to pattern after the world and try to hear from the world. Well, the church need to do this. The church need to do that. You don't need to be taking your cues from a bunch of narcissists out there in the world. Stay focused on what the Holy Spirit has you to do. Be obedient because guess what? These people have the opportunity to hear the word of God. Even Christ says this. When you, he told his disciples, when you go into the town, when you go into the city, and you go into these homes. If they receive you, you know, you bless them, let your peace be there. But if they don't receive you, they reject you, wipe the dust off your feet, keep on going. It'd be more tolerable if for, for, for Sodom and Gomorrah than for that town. All right? Because one of the things when it comes to, to uh, what, what we see with, with God and, you know, with, with Jesus Christ, is like, look here, let them be. Don't cast your prayers before swine. You know these people are mockers. You know they're ridiculed. You know these family members constantly coming after you and everything. So you ain't got to pray for them. Pray for them. You know the moment you try to share a word, you try to share a scripture with them, they're gonna go off all on a deep end. They read, they they will go off on, on things that ain't got nothing to do with the topic that you're discussing. They will go off on you and make you the point of attack. To try to call you out in front of everybody else. He said, look here. Don't even cast your prayers before swine. Okay? Don't cast. Because what you're going to do is when you share it, they're going to try to turn it around and come at you. And trample you with it. So that's why some people you just got to pray for. You pray for them, pray for them, pray for them. All right? Because God knows how to deal with narcissists. And he humbles them. Okay, he humbles them. That's why Paul said, put them out the church. Don't even eat with them. Hand them over to the devil. That's why you see what happened with Pharaoh. You see what happened to Nebuchadnezzar. Look at what happened with Saul and David. Saul was another one. The moment David started getting praised by people, what did Saul do? He would be with him one minute. The Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. And the next minute he throwing javelins at him, trying to destroy him. But look what happened to Saul. Okay. Because God will humble the prideful and the arrogant. Those that are constantly coming. That's why he says, look here. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. How do you overcome evil with good? Do good towards them. Because it's like heaping burning coals on their heads. Okay? You know why? Because they can't understand it. They don't, they don't get it. How come you ain't responding to me when I'm when I'm going off? Just because, you know, when, excuse me. Man, my nose just started itching. When you don't respond and feed into their nonsense, ooh, that, that, that gets them. Because they want you to come down because they want to what they're saying is true and showing to get you to respond in a way of anger and wrath so they can say, see what I tell you. Look at it. Even though you may you may blast off like, you know what, Lord, I know this is wrong, but I'm about to let them have it and bring out all the facts. That's what they want. Because now you could be on the same level as them and constantly going back and forth with the judge. Because then they're going to bring something else about you and want you to follow through with that. Okay? The Bible says when words are many, sin is not far off. That's in the book of Proverbs. Okay? So the Pharisees were looking to kill Jesus. Herod tried to kill Jesus. Pharaoh tried to kill the Hebrews. They felt their position would be in jeopardy all because of the character of the people of God. Or of Jesus Christ. In 2 Peter, false teachers can be narcissists because they look to make merchandise of people just like Balaam that the Bible warns about. They make merchandise of people. They want things for their own gain. Satan was a narcissist. He wanted to be exalted. Pharaohs were as well. They were full of pride and wrath, just like Herod in the New Testament. If they get a sense that, a, that the people like someone else 
and they think that that person is a threat to their empire position, they will do whatever they can to destroy them, even if it means others around them as well. They will look to destroy them. And that's what the Pharisees did. They, they not only went after the uh, Christ and crucified him. And it's despite all the signs that happened after that, they did not repent. Then they went after the apostles, the followers of Christ. That's why Christ warned them. Okay. A lot of those governors and those leaders and those kings and stuff, they were narcissists. All right. Felt untouchable. They were part of the elite. And they were designed, they were going after the people of God consistently. Okay? Narcissists will always get angry and lash out at those that have even helped them or supported them. I made mention of that before. They will talk to them in a demeaning way. In other words, they will come at you and try to demean your character, try to demean your decision making, try to demean, you know, the way you walk. And try to associate you with anybody else that's in Christendom that may have done things the wrong way, said the wrong thing, whatever. They try to demean you. They try to come against you. Okay? Because of unforgiveness. Because of bitterness on the inside of them. And that bitterness will always spew out in words. And this is what happen when, for example, you grow up. You had a father and mother in your home, or you had a single parent household and stuff, but your, your parents took good care of you. You had nice clothes and everything. stuff. So then you got to come across that bully. That's what the bully and narcissists are bullies. They like to bully people into submission. Okay. They won't quit until you submit. All right. And so uh, uh, that's why, you know, that, that, that king and Acts, he wanted that worship. He wanted them people to submit to him. But what the, 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 the angels, you know, told the servants of God, look, don't bother me. I'm a servant just like you. When Paul and them came on the scene and stuff, and they were calling them, hey, these people are, uh, I think it was uh, Apostle uh, Peter. These guys are, 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 are Hermes and these Greek gods. So they said, no, 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 we're not, we're not any of that. Okay. And so that's what these narcissists do, that they will get angry. They will lash out out of, out of nowhere. And even uh, will come against those that are uh, that that people look to and look up to. The narcissist got the goal that make it a point to try to bring them down, to try to smear them, run smear campaigns. They do that all across social media. They do it all the time, and some and sometimes all this stuff that people just expose, expose, expose and stuff because they 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 really want to try to you know run uh, smear campaigns. I'm talking about against people of God. Just because somebody makes a, a mistake and something on on social media, or whatever, don't mean a all full out full blown uh, attack mode. What if they repented and they took the video down? Now, I know there's other situations out there. I'm not talking about every single thing, but I'm just saying, don't be so quick to just run into attack. Okay? So, uh, what they like to do is they, they always like to try to uh, look to attack and bring that person that follows Christ down. They make every effort. They You could be talking about something, just about how colored, how beautiful God created the sky. And here they come. Look, you always got to bring God into it. You always got to be, uh, if God is so good, that's what the narcissist does because they don't want to repent and acknowledge God. They got to suppress the truth. So they got to come after the messenger. They have to come after you and contend against you and make you, and you may not even have all the answers to their questions or whatever. And that's what they want because they want to shame you. They want to mock you. All right. Narcissists will get angry and lash out at those that even that have even helped them or supported them and they will talk to them in a demeaning way men treating other men as peons this is the this is the whole thing with the you know the armor bear stuff when men are treating other men as peons having armor bears give them money wash their clothes pick up their suits putting their chapstick on their lips and barring their vehicles that's that's narcissism you are the you just serving them 
You know, having, you know, women armor bears and women putting on their makeup and all this other stuff is because you, you know, this woman is then got ordained by the, by the pastor, you know, and, and now they got to have armor bears under them to, to carry their Bibles, to carry stuff. And then as soon as some break off, you know, in the church or some, some act of violence happens, they ain't looking at an armor bear. They're looking for a man. I need a man to come help me. Well, what about your armor bear? The one you got, you know, hawking around, carrying all your, your 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 purses and your bags and your Louis Vuitton cases and everything, and 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 purchasing your plane tickets so you can go travel the nation and stuff. What? A, oh, that, now that armor bear ain't good enough for you. Now, now you need a man to help you. So, it, it, it's just crazy. Narcissists hate humility. The Bible says God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. Remember Nebuchadnezzar; he was prideful. And it was God's judgment that humbled him. The same way that the angel will lock Satan up in the pit. Okay? Because the war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against Satan and his angels. And Michael he kicked him out of heaven. And the Bible even talked about how the angel came and locked the serpent up, the dragon, into the pit. Okay? To show you where the true power is at. Humble them. Lock them into the pit. Ain't nothing he could do about it. All right. The parable that Jesus told about the unforgiven servant who was who was forgiven, but but then turned around and did not forgive someone else. And as a result, the king threw him into prison to be tormented. That's in Matthew chapter 18, verse 21 through 35. And again, I'm going to read to you 2 Timothy 3.17. Narcissism is addressed in the Bible in Paul's second epistle to Timothy. In the fall of A.D. 67, Paul seems to be concerned about the character and behavior of leaders within the church. So he warns Timothy to be aware of those who act out of a self-love attitude. So he's talking about even how the leadership in churches should be. If any man desires to be a bishop or an elder, this is a worthy, this is a worthy call, a worthy thing. But he must be the husband of one wife. He must be well spoken of about uh, around in the in the community around about him. He must not be a drunkard. Everything. So all those lists about leadership. Notice that the leadership he always talked about men. Okay. He says, but know this. This is Paul warning in the, in the last time as well. That in the last days perilous times will come, for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, bolsters, proud. Blasphemers, disobedient to parents, and that's one thing narcissists do. They don't like authority figures, even their own parents or their in-laws. They will lash out at everybody that's ever helped them. They will lash out at anybody that has ever shown love and compassion towards them. Again, it's like raising a snake. At the end of the day, he's still a snake because they will come to attack. All right. And then this is what this is how they get back at you, okay? They they come to attack and know that they're wrong, but they want to come and apologize about it. But as the time goes on, they find a way try to get right back in your company again, as if you've forgotten everything that they did. They try to come right back into the company. They just slither right back in there like a snake. They come in with the flattering words again. They come in talking all gentle. They'll come in talking, hey, you know, I know I made a mistake, but it, it, it's okay. Can we all just get along or something like that? They're not, see, they, they, they may acknowledge they made a mistake. They're not going to repent, okay? Meaning I'm not going to do that again. I'm sorry I hurt you. Can you forgive me? And not only that, and to show you that they're not following Christ is that they won't even go to the Lord about it. They'd rather come to you. They're not going to the Lord about it. They want you to forgive because, hey, you're a Christian. You're supposed to forgive. But that don't mean you let them in your house. That don't mean you let them in your company. That don't mean you let them, because the Bible says, turn away from them. Hey, hey, you're right. I forgive you, brother. I forgive you, sis. I forgive you. Hey, I hope everything goes well with you. They say, oh, we can't hang out with them. No, we, we, no, we can't do that. No, no, because I'm, 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 I'm trying to follow Christ, and I can't have... You know, that stuff. You ain't got to explain nothing to them. Just, hey, 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 man, you know, cool. It's, it's cool. Everything's good and stuff like that. 
You know, at work, I see you and stuff like that. Hey, how's it going? Good. We ain't hanging out. No, you're not coming over to my house. You're not coming over to the cookout. You're not coming. I'm not, you know, hanging around your family reunion, all this other stuff. No, you can't. All right? But anyway, they're disobedient to parents. They're unthankful. They won't thank you for nothing. You know, I didn't tell you to do that for me. You give them some money. You help them out with some clothes or whatever. You take them somewhere out to eat. I didn't tell you to do that for me. You did that on your own. You did that because you wanted to do, do, do it. I had this one client. Oh, my goodness. This dude, he would, if you were in social work, he made sure that if you was really called to that position because the way he he came at you. Uh, I mean, what I mean, one minute he's upset with you, cussing you out and everything. This now he upset with the system and never realizes his decision is the reason why his family was in the condition that they were in because of his anger, because of his his outburst of wrath, his outburst of anger. He never looked at it. See, this is what happened with, with narcissists that they, they never look at the things that they are doing that's contributing to the chaos in their life. That's contributing to what's going on in their marriage. They never look at it like that. They never look at what they've done, what they said. And the moment you call out, oh, everybody's against me. Oh, it's, it's always, you know, everybody just looking at me and, and treating me wrong. They play the victim very well. They play the victim real quick because they don't, they, it's like they don't even have the, the memory of the things that they've done. Okay. Now, again, these are traits of narcissism, of a narcissist. So anyway, I had this client, this dude, I worked for an organization and I knew he would, he would lash out every now and then. And this is what I mean by walking on eggshells and stuff because you get around this person, you try to make sure you don't say the wrong thing that's going to set them on because now the meeting, our team meeting is going to go all in the haywire and everything like that. But sometimes you're like, you know, I don't care. I'm going to say what needs to be said. And a couple of meetings I did. i like, look here, man. The reason why you this stuff is happening in your family is because of your anger. It's because of your anger and stuff. You laughing on everybody, and you can't do that. You pushing everybody away that's trying to help support your family. And this team is there, the therapists, you know, the, the, the mentors and stuff for your daughter. All this stuff is happening. We're trying to come together, but you keep pushing everybody away, and it puts everything at the beginning of the starting point for this case. So anyway... It got to the point that, hey, you know, he came to me, Mr. Williams, you know, uh, uh, can you help us with our bill for our phone bill? Because if the phone getting cut off, we got to pay for the house. And we got to do it. I said, all right, man, you know, you know what? I'm going to look at it. I'm going to go and help you out. Talk to my organization and stuff that I work for. And, and you know, we did. That's the kind of stuff we did. We didn't, we didn't put that out there because, you know, you put that, you, we, you know, our organiz organization will help pay for your bills sometimes. People are just, you know, they just milk you. I had one, one of my coworkers, he was, uh, <laughs> he was on the phone with this woman and, uh, one of his clients and he was just talking about, you know, he was very polite and stuff talking to her. And, uh, he was like, well, ma'am, you know, uh, now that your, your stuff is on, you know, now we got to make sure that you, you, you got to go to these team meetings. You got to be there. So something was said by her and then she hung the phone up on him and I was in the next, I was in one cubicle and all I heard was him say, he said, okay, oh, really? So you gonna hang up on me after I just got done paying your bills? So you gonna hang up on me after I got done paying your bills, huh? Okay, okay, I got you. So I was laughing in my cubicle, but anyway, this man, he asked me to help pay for you know his phone, the, the phone bill, whatever. So anyway, we did it. Met him at the office of, hey, man, I appreciate it, Mr. Williams, you know. I said, all right, man, it's okay, man. I'm just hoping, you know, y'all, we moving forward with your case and everything. Okay, okay. So one day we had to go to court. His daughter ended up getting sent off to a, a treatment facility because she was just, I mean, messing up, running away from home and everything like that. And man, he got upset because it blindsided him. And he was not expecting that. So he got into it. We had a meeting in a in a probation officer's office, and he's sitting next to me. And he got to run in his mouth. I said, man. I said, you doing all this talking? I said, you weren't doing that when you wanted, you wanted us to pay your bills. He said, yeah, because you was dumb enough to do it. You was dumb enough to do it. I mean, it got heated in there to where we was about to, it was about to be a fight in there because he stood, he, he said something to me. And I, I said, man, you know what? I'm sitting in this corner. Ain't no way in the world I'm going to let this man get one up on me. And I was, so I, I had to stand up. But anyway, they ended up dissolving the whole thing and dealing with him and removing him out of the, uh, out of the office and stuff because of his anger. Because of that anger and the outburst of wrath. And even though you help that person out, they act like you didn't do nothing for them. 
Okay? So they're unthankful, unholy. You know, part of holiness is that you got to you gotta walk in humility. You got to walk in righteousness. You got to do things God's way. So they're unholy, unloving, unforgiving. These are the examples I gave before. They're slanders. They try to run your character down. They try to run you down. Okay? This is why the Bible tells you to put on the full armor of God. The breastplate of righteousness, doing things the right way, reacting the right way. The belt of truth, walking upright, holding on to the truth, the word of God. Okay? They're slanders. They're without self-control. One of the fruits of the spirit is self-control. But the narcissists, they have no self-control. They just, mm, and just, and just blow off on everybody. And this is one thing that narcissists do, especially in marriages, is that they will try to be quiet. Because they want you to, 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 to bow to them. They'll try to be quiet and act like they just disassociate themselves from the family, disassociate themselves from your, 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 your friend group, whatever, a uh, uh, Christian circle. They try to disassociate because they want you to come after them. They want you to pander to them. They want you to, to, uh, to, 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 uh, to cater to them. Oh, what's wrong? What's wrong? No. Oh, we're not talking today. We're not talking today, okay? So uh, go on there on your side of the room. We're going to do this. It's a manipulation. It's a mind game that they play because they want you to want them. They want to play that role. And I'm talking about even in, in, in marriage. They want to play that role to where they, they try to get you to, oh, oh, the house ain't the same because now he's upset or she's upset. So, they, so she tries to hold off on you. Oh, you ain't getting this. They just hold off on you, just manipulate you to where you just, you're constantly trying to chase, you're trying to, you're trying to make amends, you're trying to, you know, to repair things. They don't want that. They want you to submit to them. They want you to apologize, even though you did nothing wrong. They're the ones that took things out of proportion. God like, they want you to do that. That's the way of controlling and manipulating the whole situation to where they can control you. Okay? Now the marriage, hey. That's, a, that's a, a completely different ball game because you have to pray for your spouse. You have to pray for your spouse. I'm not going to go on about you didn't pay attention to the warning signs or whatever this is, whatever the case may be. I'm not going to go on about it. One thing I would say that about narcissists, a lot of them pop up on these dating apps. A whole lot of them. Men and women. Okay? Now they got dating apps with teenagers too. It's the same way. I believe they got date naps with teenagers too. But a lot of them, that's what they that's what they do. They 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 want to be chased and they they know how to play the the, the put the little Christian mask on that they try to do. And then all of a sudden, now all of a sudden, you know, you're getting married to them. Now all of a sudden the, the whole thing about Christ, they start pushing it away. Now y'all don't even go to church no more. Okay. That's what the children of the devil do. They always try to lead people away from Christ. When you know good and well the things that's been sown into your life out of the word of God and from the church, from a pastor, you know the ways of righteousness. That's why 2 Peter talks about they promise you liberty, but they themselves are in bondage. And then it says, don't, it says, stand fast, don't fall into the ways of the wicked. Okay, so for those that are in marriage and you can identify with some of this stuff that I'm talking about, you have to go to the Lord in prayer and pray for that person because really people of God, there's bitterness that's there because of stuff, the way that they grew up, the way that they, you didn't have the father there, the mother wasn't there, people, they grew up in alcohol, uh, alcohol, you know, field homes and around violence and everything they seen the distrust that they you know from parents and stuff and they 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 hate women they hate men and stuff all because of the things that they've been exposed to and now satan has a, 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 they have allowed that unforgiveness and bitterness to come inside of them to where now those spirits have access to them and they start wreaking havoc on every relationship they a lot of times with narcissists they don't they, they can only handle things going good and going well so long they, they got to destroy it they got to find a way to disrupt the peace to disrupt the unity they got to find a way to do that because they're not comfortable with things being good things being righteous things being pure they got to find a way to do it and sometimes they manipulate in order to get out of a situation okay they sabotage it 
So they so they ain't got to show their face at the family reunion. They ain't got to show their faith their face at the at the uh, at the company meeting. They ain't got to show their face at church. So they gotta they gotta say something or do something to where they can find that way out. Okay. Despisers of good. There he is, right there, <laughs> man. Traitors, traitors. Meaning that hey. One minute they with you, they they'll leave you. You ever you ever grow up, you know, when you had a friend or, or a group of people that you was hanging around, and all of a sudden, a roasting session, a, a roasting session, then started. I'm sorry, I'm, uh, this, this video went, went went long, but oh well, a roasting session started, and all of a sudden, the very ones you with, they laughing at you from the person that's roasting you. They making them laugh. They done turned on you in front of everybody. You're like, oh my gosh, traitors. You y'all a bunch of traitors, okay? Or somebody that's uh your friend, and you get ready. You know we grew up. You know we would get into altercations or fist fights and stuff with our uh, our friends or whatever. And then they be over there instigating with everybody else, laughing at you, trying to get you to fight. You like? That's what traitors are. They can care less. They that they have no allegiance. They will come against you no matter how much you've been there for them, no matter all the stuff you've done for them. They will turn their back on you at a drop of a dime. Okay? Headstrong. That's being proud. They just want to rebel. They, you, you, you can't tell them nothing. They're headstrong on doing something. Okay? Haughty. Lovers of pleasure. They, everything they do is about fleshly gratification. Gratifying their flesh. They can care less about the things of the Spirit of God. Humble himself before the Lord, hearing the Lord, reading the word of God. They lovers of pleasure. They all want that their their that that gratification of their of their carnal nature. Okay? That's what I meant. Even with that example about, you know, sometimes, you know, certain men in the marriage or whatever, they try to uh give women a silent treatment. I love how uh, 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 Pastor Craig Lewis, you know, uh, shows it. Be, he calls it being a pouty person. Always pouting. Trying to, I ain't talking to you no more. I ain't talking to you today. Knowing that this person did something wrong. They, they, but they try to put the blame on you. It's your fault. That they was, went off on some cussing tangent. It's, all, it's, it's your fault. So they try to give the silent treatment. No, we're not. Talk, we're not going to talk today. We're not going to talk today. No, no, no. I'm talking about a man to his wife. No, we're not going to talk today. We're not going to talk about it. We're not going to talk about it. Just going over there by your business, going with the children. We're not going to talk about it. They stay in the basement the whole time. Then when it's time, night time comes, time to go to bed. They go to bed, stay on their side of bed. You stay on yours. Wake up, do the exact same thing. They're trying to get you to cater to them. They're trying to get you to want them and to need them. Okay, that's 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 the kind of nonsense that goes on with somebody that walks in that narcissism because they want to feel that they're the important one. All right. So. Lovers of pleasures rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying its power, they play church, but do not want to change. They want the world. They want the, the church to be like the world. That's what the, a lot of times you see people outspoken about. The church need to be this. The church be this. And usually it's somebody in the world that try, got a nerve to talk about the church and they living in sin. They living in, in darkness. They living in bondage and sin. Okay? And so these people know how to play church. They can be very arrogant. They can, you know, think that they that the position that they got on the praise team or in the choir team, whatever, they can't be replaced. They can't be replaced. They got the they got the best vocals. They got the best ability to play on the musical instruments and stuff. Even though they ain't with their wives, they'll stay on them instruments because of their ability to play. Because they want the praises of people. They want the applause of people. Even Christ says, look here. Uh, he said, uh, he gave a parable about the man. There were two men and he said, one man stood before God and said, God, I thank you that I'm not like this sinner. I, I pay my tithes. I do this. I pray four times a day. I do all these other things. And then, and then one man came before God and said, God, forgive me, a sinner. And he asked his disciples, says, which one of these men were justified? And they said, the one that repented. He said, yes, because the one who is forgiven much will love much. 
The arrogance of these people that are in narcissism, they boast in their works. They boast in what they've done, what they've accomplished. They boast that and they hold that up against other people. They hold that up against other people. In other words, they compete against them. Say, hey, I'm better than you. Okay? I'm better than you because I've done this. I've accomplished this. I've done all these different things and stuff. And look what you're doing. That's why I, when people get to trying to uh, show their whole spiritual credentials that they got in the comment section on Facebook, whatever, I'm like, you know what? You putting all that stuff out there showing that you, you know, you was a youth pastor for 10 years. You went to theological schools. You went to, you graduated from seminary and everything. And, and you've done this. You baptized 15 people and stuff. But on this particular topic, you have no clue what you're talking about. So you don't put all your credentials out there only to show that you're wrong. And that's what Christ Jesus did. Nicodemus, what did he do? He came to Jesus Christ at night. And Jesus said, how is it that you're a ruler and not even know these things? You, 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 you're a ruler and you don't know these things. See, people can get up there and get so puffed up by all their accomplishments to put out there in front of other Christians and stuff. Well, I've been on YouTube for 15, for 15 years and stuff. And uh, how you going to tell me? And how you going to correct me? I study this stuff. I know this stuff. That's what Hebrew Israelites, that's another form. I forgot all about that of narcissism is these Hebrew Israelites. I mean, my goodness, boasting about keeping the law, all that boasting, one people, one black people to come unto them. You need to come with us, brother. You need to come over here with us. And knowing they in, there, they in bondage, these guys are polygamists. They got three or four wives. Now they go in this, this movement where they're trying to move out into the woods, off the grid, you know, and they're going to they remain in the woods when Christ returns too because that's, that's, that's where they're going to be at. They're going to stay there because these, these guys, they boast about that they're the very thing that the Pharisees and stuff did. They don't have the spirit of God. They talk a whole lot of stuff, a whole lot of stuff that when you question them, they end up ensnaring their own selves by their own words. Okay? Because they boast about keeping the law. You know, that they just they the supreme. They the elite because they 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 the, the skin color. So that means they the they the, the, the because of their skin color, they are the chosen people of God. Everybody else white, whatever, no, they're not. They they they're not chosen, they're gonna go to hell automatically. Okay? So it's crazy. But so what narcissists do, they know how to play church. They know how to play it. They know how to wear the mask. They know how to say the, you know, uh, uh, biblical terminology. They know how to say all of that stuff. But when it comes down to it, when they see a, a so-called brother and sister in need, they are nowhere to be found. That's why the Bible says that how be it that you have a, you know, you see a brother. I believe it's in uh, First John. Have a brother and sister in need. And you shut up your bowls of compassion. You say, I, you know, I pray for you. But no, if you have the means to do something, you help that person. How can you say you have the love of God in you when you see your brother and sister need and you don't, you don't provide anything for them when you have the ability to? All right? And so what does the Bible say about narcissists? Turn away from them. Relatives, you know, the family members, the the, 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 the co-workers, the people that's, that's, that's professing Christ in the church, and you see these characteristics, you see these traits in them, the Bible says turn away from them. Because the one thing about narcissists, they have to have people in support of them. They can't stand to be isolated. They don't, they don't like that because it causes them to get to reflect on themselves. That's why you see all this, this, this gay pride stuff. They got to get the politicians. They got to get everybody to affirm them, to praise them. Because when you speak against them and isolate them to their own to their own self, they can't take that. They can't. They cannot take it. All right. That's why Satan he didn't he didn't he didn't get kicked out of him by himself. A third of the angels had to come with him. He couldn't do it by saying he needed people to, he needed being so firm. He needed that support. Okay. Narcissists also follow false beliefs. For example, black people gravitating towards anything and everything African. And I'm not, look here, this is not to be against, you know, the the whole African content. I'm not talking about African brothers and sisters in Christ. I'm talking about all these artifacts. See, they see the reason why I say they, they follow false beliefs is because look at Nebuchadnezzar. 
Look at the Pharaoh. Look at Herod. These people were not Christians. They were not following God. They were embracing false God doctrine, false God beliefs, and they were forcing people and leading people into it. The same thing with Hebrew Israelites. It's all about black. It could be you could say the thing, same thing about um, uh, uh, Mormons, the Church of Latter Day Saints. That, 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 you see a whole lot of that stuff in there. Okay, it's always another another uh, another Jesus that they that they teach or, or a false God belief. Okay, all of a sudden people, you know, they once walked with Christ. All of a sudden, now they just embracing everything African. We gotta, we gotta go back to our roots and stuff like that. It not, not about righteousness. Not about uh, drawing closer to Jesus Christ. Not about the Word of God. Now they question the Word of God. Now it's the white man's religion. Now let's go back to Africa. Let's get into African garments. Let's get the African, you know, things. Let's do, let's get back to wearing daishikis and stuff. And and it can, you know, let's let's make the the uh, you know uh, uh, everybody just get it. everything African to show that we you know we we're going back to our roots. That's what they do. It's like that movie. Uh, <laughs> back in the day, I, well, I think I was in college when that came out. That movie CB4. And they had that one guy who was with uh, Gusto. And he was rapping. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, he left the group. And he became the, I'm black and he black and I'm black, y'all. And it's a fact, y'all. And I'm black and he black because I'm black, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> he kept he kept repeating that hook over and over again, and it was it was funny, <laughs> it was crazy. But that's what people started turning to, you know. And I say this as an African American, you know, uh, male. This is what I see people doing all the time, and they go right back when they get into the, the narcissist. They follow these false beliefs because they cannot come to the true and living God because they do not want to repent. They don't want to live right. They don't want the challenge of living holy and living pleasing and submitting your body to the Lord. Okay? They get off involved in all the, the African culture, blackness, and they doubt the gospel or want to mix the gospel with these beliefs. All right? So they got to mix the gospel. They try to mix it to where everybody in the Bible is black. Okay, they got to mix the gospel to try to to try to appease and try to that's what the Hebrew Israelites do to try to talk about how the things that was discussed in Isaiah or Jeremiah were in relation to the slavery that took place in America, even though that was thousands of years before America even came into existence. See, if those prophecies were in the book of Isaiah and were shared with those people in that time. How are you going to say it didn't apply to them? It applied to thousands of years later in the, into America. What good would those prophecies have done being shared to those people if, oh, by the way, this is going to take place thousands of years, you know, down the road. But I'm sharing it with you right now to rebuke you. It, it, these people, these Hebrew Israelites and stuff, it is crazy. It is completely crazy. Their, 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 their timeline and their math is completely off. Okay, so anyway, that's what narcissists will do. They got they can't follow Christ because to follow Christ, that means the word of God is going to search them. That means the Holy Spirit who convicts the world of sin is going to draw them to repentance and cause them to see themselves as they truly are. And they don't want that. That's why in Romans chapter one, it specifically says they suppress the knowledge of the truth. Okay. They, they they reject God, but turn to these all these false gods and these images made by men, four-footed beasts, all these other stuff. They always go after idols or go after a culture that embraces spiritism, okay? The narcissists in the Old Testament promoted false god worship and tried to be declared as gods. That's exactly what Lucifer wanted. All right. Narcissism is also what the rap culture produces 100 percent of the time because they're boasting on material gain, sexual immorality, what they've done to this woman, what they've done to this man. You got Cardi B, Meg Thee Stallion, always talking about how they're using their, 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 their bodies to, to lure men, to take advantage of men. It's all about the person gratifying themselves. This is how guys go one to one girl to the next girl, have no regard for it, don't mean anything to them. 
Now that girl is scarred and wounded, got three or four children and stuff like that. And that guy can go off and have a whole nother family, go off and have a whole nother uh, girl, you know, to be with and everything. And that whole rap culture, rock and roll culture, the country music culture, this is about gratifying themselves, exalting themselves. That's why they got to have concerts with 30,000 people because they want the applause of people. As ministers of the gospel, whether we got one person, two people, three people, people hearing the word of God, that's enough. You don't have to be in front of 50,000 people. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but I'm saying that is not the goal, to be in front of 20,000 people. Okay, that's not the, the goal is to live your life and walk and follow Jesus Christ. And those that have the that those who have who will be open to hear what you're saying, they will listen to you. You can minister to them. Those that God gives you the open, the, the open door and opportunity to minister to, you can minister, you can witness to them. Okay, so that's what's happening. Also, you see this stuff with these artists because they can talk about killing and doing all this stuff. They can care less who they think, what other people think about them. That's why they walk on stage or go on interviews and stuff with their shirts on. Hair all wild and ugly, look like a tarantula is upside down on them. They can care less. They don't care what people got to say. They can care less about anybody's feelings. They, they, they promote this stuff. They, they, they glorify in, in wickedness and evil. Because they're narcissists. They don't want any accountability. They don't want any accountability for their lyrics. Every time they go on an interview and somebody bring up their lyrics and stuff, oh, we'll see oh, the record industry. You got to look at the producers. The producer, Look, the producers can't produce nothing if you ain't cooked up with them. What, what, what kind of job they going to have if there ain't nobody out there willing to, to do that dirty work? They ain't going to have a job. These artists, they are full of vanity. And they're narcissists. Every single last one of them. Because they can care less what people think about them. They can care less at, uh, uh, about how many lives that they are leading to hell. And they are leading to getting gunned down in the streets. As a matter of fact, when's the last time you've seen any of these artists show up to one of these uh, these gang members' uh, funeral? If, it, if, he, if, if they won and they click. Oh, they not going though. Even though they bought their tickets to their concerts and stuff, even though they playing all their music at the youth events at school and stuff, at the youth dances and stuff, which I still don't know why parents are sending their children to these youth uh, uh, dances at school and and also to these neighborhood block parties in the inner city. What do you think is going to happen? What do you think is going to happen when a block party is playing filthy? Foul music encouraging violence, encouraging sexual morality, and all of a sudden gunshots ring out. What do you th wh what did you expect was going to happen? Oh, we just trying to bring the community together for a peaceful day of celebration. Rat tat 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 tat. Within your uh, 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 beautiful celebration, and it's being held at 10, 11 o'clock at night. Or not even, it, it don't even matter if it's at night nowadays. It could be four or five o'clock, you know, in the afternoon. But you, 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 you're promoting that mess and you wonder why these kids are getting gunned down in the streets at block parties. Come on now. This is, the people just, they, they're not paying attention to stuff. Why are you sending your child to the after school dance, you know, the after set and stuff? What do you think is going to be promoted? What do you think is going to, your child is going to come away with? Your teenager. What do you think they're going to come away with? Being indoctrinated by unclean demonic spirits through their music and song, encouraging them to be narcissists, to gratify their flesh. Use whoever you got to use to gratify your fleshly carnal desires. And then you want to try to let them go to that and then bring them to church or put them in the choir stand or, or, or let them play on the drums at church and stuff because the pastor, they don't know what they've been doing and stuff. You just put them up there. And now that's why I say they know how to play church. They know and have the knowledge of God, but deny his power, unwilling to change. All right. Another one is older women, oh, excuse me, older men and sometimes women. Marrying some younger women or younger men because they are naive and they can manipulate them with mind games. Narcissism. 
Because when somebody is doing that, now I'm, I'm, I'm not, look here. I'm talking about, you know, people that are walking in these characteristics and walking in these traits. It's not across the board. You hear me? But sometimes these guys know I'm giving me a young one that ain't got nothing. So that I can, you know, oh, not, I won't say ain't got nothing, but have her career going for it. Got this going on. So I can I can lay up under her. Uh, I'm trying to find the trying to find a job, but they they at home all the time. I, this is, I do not understand how these women have these grown men living in the home with them. The grass ain't cut, cars ain't fixed, ain't no gas in the garage, ain't no gas in the car. Nothing being done in the home to clean up the home and stuff. The woman doing everything. Matter of fact, they pull up to the gas pump. The woman gets out the car pumping the gas and a grown teenage or, or a teenage boy or a grown man is sitting in the passenger seat. What in the world? I hope you, if, if you are a child of Jesus Christ, you ought to be ashamed of yourself if you allowing this to happen. Because you are allowing it. Matter of fact, I, I take it ain't the husband. Get rid of him. You shouldn't be in no relationship with an unbeliever in the first place. You ain't gonna, you ain't gonna reach them for Christ. You deceiving yourself, thinking you got to be in a relationship with somebody in order to reach them for the Lord. If that man ain't found the Lord on his own, you ain't gonna do it being his girlfriend. Okay, same thing with you too, fellas. If that young lady don't know the Lord and ain't following Christ, don't be something there. I'm gonna get in a relationship with her. We in a relationship, and I'm gonna take her to church with me, and I'm gonna do this. No, you can't do that. The Bible says don't be unequally yoked with a non-believer, with an unbeliever. You're going to get enticed sexually. You're going to get enticed and to compromise it. Even the one of the wisest men in the Bible, Solomon, God said, do not go after these women in these other cultures, these pagan women, because they're going to turn you against me. And you may say, oh, I ain't going to leave God and this, this and that. You already compromised about being in a relationship with that girl. Let her go. I had to do it. I'm talking about personal experience. I had to cut stuff off because like my relationship with God is too much and I see myself compromised. I see myself stumbling. No, I want somebody that is following the Lord. Okay, so anyway, older men marrying these young women who are naive because they can manipulate them and use mind games. All right, they use mind games on them. Playing mind games, oh, I ain't got to work. You know, I'm going to stay at home today. They really don't have a job, but the wife don't know it. So they just playing the game. Living off of her. When it, when it's time, though, you know, uh, and children, there, they don't want anything to do with the children. Their own children, their own offspring, they don't want nothing to do with them. They'd rather have their children off in their daycare so that they, the wife and him can go off and do whatever they want to do. Do I any time during the day? Or put up on the grand, put it, put it on the grandparents to, to halfway raise the kids so we can go off and do what we gotta do. It's all for the they're selfish. They don't want to spend time with their own children. Some of these guys do this stuff and they got a second family and people don't even realize it because they know how to play the game. That's why they wanna the, they don't want to bring their spouse around their, their family members. Cause you don't want the history to come up. You don't want the, you don't know, you don't want what's really going on. You want to get the full backstory of this man to, 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 so they know how to hide their history. They're not openly honest. And the same thing with the, with these women. Okay. They get these younger, these younger guys and stuff to, 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 to manipulate and control them because the moment, and this is the other thing that I think is 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 dangerous that that woman got her own house all of a sudden the man moves in with her now i had i had a buddy that you know uh his wife was i would say about a, a few years older than him and he married her she was a christian woman and she had her own house and stuff they moved in within like a few months he bought they he bought the house because that was their plan now, I completely get that. I completely understand that. But you better pay attention when a man is trying. Watch this. When a man is dating you for four or five years and he don't know if he want to marry you yet, you need to get out of that relationship. 
You don't need to give him no ultimatum and stuff because I'm telling you, men know within, I want, it don't even take a year to know if you want to marry this woman or not. It don't take no four or five, three years, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years. You done celebrated ten birthdays with this person. Well, I'm still waiting. No. No. He knows. And he knows if he's just stringing it along and stuff like that because, hey, he just he just playing a game. Okay? So ain't, ain't no way in the world. So, and what these guys, they do this stuff as, 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 as mind games and string along because they want their own, own gratification. All right? You cannot let these things see they 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 know this stuff. You have to pay attention to the signs. You have to pay attention not on that, but God, if you're a follower of Christ, God will show you. He will show you in dreams about this person. He will show you in dreams about it. All right? Whether it's male or female, whatever. He will show you in dreams about it and warn you. But if you too headstrong, you won't listen and then find yourself in a situation that you're like, man, if I just listen, okay? But anyway, so older men marry uh, young women who are naive because they can manipulate them and use and use mind games for their own gain, their own gratification. Matter of fact, one of the things that you better pay attention to, young ladies, when a man, when a man wants you to put everything in your name, and he has he don't want the house in his name, he don't want vehicles in his name, he don't want none of that. He's trying to hide something. Pay attention. He's trying to hide quit being naive. Well, he he just he just, you know, his credit is bad. Well, he, and you don't even know what his credit score is. Because he ain't telling you, he ain't disclosing nothing. Okay? As men, we lead. Men should want the house in their name, the vehicles in their name. That's your name. Your, your wife is to bear your last name. Okay? Your children are to have your last name. The Bible had men in the Bible whose homes were named after them. The house of David, the house of even, even Saul, the house of Saul, the house of this. You know, they were named after men. Okay? Now, this whole thing, and I'm going to jump on this uh, real quick too. Because usually a lot of this stuff happens around tax time and holidays, especially around Christmas. Not so much, you know, Thanksgiving, it happens a little bit, but tax time and Christmas time. That's when the, the, uh, the, uh, the hobosexuals come in. The hobos, I didn't say homo, I said hobo. Meaning they, they, they move in with these women right around this time so they can get them tax benefits and, that, and, and, and that, those Christmas gifts. Okay, that's what that's what they are, hobosexuals. <laughs> so, uh, but anyway, a person, you know, these guys, these women, they portray themselves to be Christian, but when they marry, they don't want the church, nor do they lead their families to the Lord. They caught you and got what they wanted. They are also perverted. Narcissists are perverted. They 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 walk in the perversion. They walk in lust. Look at, you know, look at the kings in the Old Testament and everything. They want to be exalted. They will go both ways. Even when you look in Romans chapter one, and I explained in that, in my men's, the men's meeting that I was, that I was teaching that, how the apostle Paul was addressing the king at that time who castrated a 13 year old boy and married them. He was perverted. That's why Apostle Paul was hitting on it so much in Romans chapter 1 that those who do such things are worthy of death. Not only do those things, but also approve those who do those things. Okay, so they're perverted. They're always involved in some kind of pornography, saying all kind of unclean, perverted comments. And look it, God can save anybody. I'm not saying these people are unredeemable or anything like that, but I will say this, because of their pride, it will take a, things that will humble them to where they have no choice but to come and repent or end up losing everything in their lives and hit rock bottom to understand I messed up. Okay. So this is what narcissism is. And I gave you some of the biblical examples 
Uh, and I definitely want you to, you know, check out the, the link of this lady's uh, testimony of being married to a narcissist. I am in no way saying divorce and run. I'm, I'm not saying that at all because I know that God can work in anybody, but you have to pray. You have to pray. You have to fast. You have to seek the Lord. Okay. And what somebody's experience is, may not be your experience, especially in your marriage, that just because uh, God has done something a certain way in a person's life doesn't mean that that's exactly what's going to happen with you. It's a testimony for a reason. All right? It's a testimony because it's their testimony with the Lord, but with every testimony, hold things up to the word of God. God hates divorce. But he also does not let somebody just sit in somewhere to where they can just get beat on and beat on. No, you got to get out of that. And I'm talking about men too. When some of these women just beat, you know, physically, <clears throat> running them down. The Bible says it's better to stay on the, on, on the roof of a house than in the inside a home with a quarrelsome wife. Always arguing. Now, I'm not saying, you know, men, because you didn't gave them a reason to argue with you because you done spent up all the, the mortgage money. Uh, you mishandling the finances and stuff, and now y'all got to eat out of canned goods and stuff and TV dinners. But you constantly got a pattern of of, of going out and, and leaving her at home with the kids all the time. So, yeah, you're going to come home to a quarrelsome wife, all right, because you're not holding up your responsibility. You're calling them names. You're running them down and everything. And you think you're going to have a woman that's, that's, that, that uh, uh, is going to just, you know, uh, be a true helpmate to you? Please, you setting yourself up for failure. As a matter of fact, the rise and fall of that home is based on you, man, and your words and how you build your wife up or how you tear her down. You tearing your own home down. You tearing yourself down. Because the Bible talks about how the two shall become one. Okay? So, uh, nobody is out of reach. Even Christ says, you know, it, it, you know that uh, uh, all things are possible with God. All right? Even the rich young ruler, Lord, you know, another act of like, self-righteousness, narcissism. Lord, I've kept all the commandments. I've done all these things. And then Jesus says, look here. Sell all you have and give to the poor. Then come follow me. And because that rich young ruler had much gain, he couldn't even do it. He could not humble himself. And that's why I gave the examples of what happens to these narcissists. Is that God humbles them. God will humble them. They don't like the, the last shall be first and the first shall be last. They don't like the he who humbles himself will be exalted, but he who exalts himself will be humbled. They don't, they don't like that because they're following their father, the devil. And you have to pray for God to engage them, for God to deal with their hearts, for God to show them their ways because God can deal with people in dreams. He can deal with people in life experiences and stuff the way they come to, to humble themselves. He can deal with people in, 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 in even some things that will seem traumatic to them. Because God is patient and he, he wants all people to come to repentance. But some people got to learn the hard way. You ever see those testimony services where somebody said, you know, people, I heard one guy, he was like, man, I came to Christ and he was in the drug game and he was in the gangs. And I think all like the dope game, whatever. He talked about how he got zipped up in a body bag and these guys is going to kill him. And God spared his life and he gave his life to the Lord. He got humbled. Terror, terror struck him. They're like, I can't keep living like this because, you know, he done almost died already. And, you know, I, I've seen people to where they, they've lost, their they eyeballs got completely knocked out. And they are blind in one eye all because of the way that they was living. And they end up coming to the Lord. I'm not saying this is how God going to deal with people. But some people learn the hard way. Okay. And so that's how God, he humbled people. You know, in the, in the Old Testament and even in the New Testament. Because of this narcissism. They was walking after the devil. What did God do to Paul? I mean, to Saul before he became Paul. He was persecuting the church. He was a he was like one of the, the head ones of the, of, the, of the Pharisees and everything. What happened? He had an encounter with the Lord. Blinded him for days. Completely humbled him. 
And then after that, he came to Christ and started preaching the gospel of the kingdom. So don't think that just because I went over this stuff, people, you may identify with everything that I was talking about, family members, whatever. Don't quit praying for people. Don't feed into it. Don't try to release wickedness with wickedness. Don't get into arguments with them. You know what they're about. You can't change a spot on a leopard. You know, just because you change the spot on a leopard or a zebra, it don't take them away from being a zebra or a leopard. Okay? If it walk like a duck, quack like a duck, it's a duck. You can't tame a snake and make him obedient to you or her obedient to you. No. You cut him off. You turn away from him. I'm not talking about marriage. Marriage is something, is something else. But I'm saying this, is that those family members and loved ones, God wants to save them. And God knows how to deal with them. Okay? So I just want you to be to take to take things and, and, and be balanced. Because again, share the experience that you've had in the comment section. Share, you know, the testimonies and stuff of what God has done and deliverance and everything else. And or it may have been you that was a that was a narcissist and stuff. Uh, share that because those comments somebody may hear and read that and it may encourage them. Okay? It may encourage them and give them hope and, 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 and trust in the Lord to, to, to bring deliverance to them and even in their lives personally. Because I, I've seen this and dealt with it, you know, uh, amongst uh, people that, that I, I know and, and care about. But I'll tell you one thing, that ain't going to stop me from praying for them. It's not going to stop me from praying for them because I believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay. Until, you, hey, God knows how to deal with them. And one thing that, that God will do is he knows how to deliver his people. The Bible says this, even when Lot was being vexed by the, the wickedness of the people in Sodom and Gomorrah, God delivered him. Sometimes the stuff that these people do, these narcissists do at your job or whatever, trying to get exalted and stuff, and you know, like, ooh, ooh, if they... They are so wrong, and I see it. I see it. Ain't nobody else seeing this stuff. God knows how to deliver you. That stuff bothering you, irking you, you know, when they're doing stuff like that, ask God, Lord, help me in my heart. So that I, because I know they know they know how to trigger this. They know how to come against me and stuff. One thing I had to learn is like, look here, you ain't got to prove yourself in no, in no debate. You ain't got to prove yourself against your, 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 towards certain people amongst your family. You ain't got to. If you see that this constantly causing the argument, don't even bring it up. Don't keep doing it. Just pray for them. Because it's sometimes, people of God, it is hard to share things with your family members. All right? Because they know you. They're familiar with you. And now it's tough for them to receive anything from you. This is like the apostles. You know, when Paul, he 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 went to the apostles. They're like, hey, wait, 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 wait a minute. This is the same person that persecuted us. So it took some time. It took some time, okay? Even Jesus Christ says a prophet is without honor within his own his own home, his own area, okay? Because they were familiar with him. Aren't you Mary, son? Aren't you the, the carpenter? Aren't you with, how are you the Christ and stuff? And what is it? Because they were familiar with him, okay? So I want to, I want to, I'm going to leave you with this. Pray for them. Pray for God to engage in the Holy Spirit to deal with their hearts and stuff. And if they don't, hey, God knows how to deal with people. God knows how to humble people. Because he, he's, he's the best at it. And you're sitting up there like, I can do, Lord, I pray, have mercy on them. Have mercy on them. Okay? So I just want to share that with you. I hope it's a blessing to you. Uh, and it gives you the equipment to, to kind of deal with those Narcissists are those who have those traits because full-blown narcissists, they will they, they become uh, so psychopaths, sociopaths, whatever, because they, they want to destroy, I mean, physically, because their own needs or agenda is not being met or because somebody, they look at somebody as a threat to them, even though that person is minding their business and just living for the Lord. We've seen the Pharisees do it to Jesus. We've seen the Pharisees do it to the apostles. We see it all the time. Okay? 
So I just want to share that with you. I know it was a very long video. Man, I think I hit a record on this one, but I just want to share this with you. This is something that's been that I've been uh, looking into like the last couple of days and just really been stirred to kind of share it. But I hope that you, it was a blessing to you. And remember, if it's in the word, it's in the word. God bless you. Love you in Jesus' name.